Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Gaming Stooges Talks podcast. We are the Gaming Stooges. I'm Jack. You can call me Cloud. And I'm Landon. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion, and if you do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, following us on Twitch, or joining our Discord. Let's get on with the show. Hi, everybody. You know... Hello. It's time that we got a nice revision for the Gaming Stooges Talks podcast. I suggest we have the new super micro Gaming Stooges Talks podcast elite family edition XL Slim 1S. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, today we're going to be talking about console revisions. And as you might be seeing if you're watching on Twitch or if you're watching the VOD export... Uh, I've revised the visuals for our podcast a little bit. It's nothing special, but now Boo. you can kind of get better Boo. look at all three of us. The chat has been moved down towards the bottom, so it's easy to keep up with while not being intrusive. So this is this is too close of a close up on my face. I don't <laughs> think the viewers consented to this. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I've got uh, a list of revisions and before. Before we do, uh, I, I assume we're just going to do a nice smasher pass through all of these. But uh, before yeah. we do, sure, I have uh, I have to address an elephant in the room. I kind of know what our answers are probably going to be for this, but a- uh, I still want to ask it. So, the Game Boy Color, Nintendo's kind of weird about it. They they consider it part of the Game Boy line. Like its its sales is wrapped into like the Game Boy line. But unlike any other revision I have on this massive list, it was still like made with the intention to have its own library of games. Whereas even though like the DSI and the 3DS or the new 3DS have a small selection of exclusive games, they weren't made for the purpose of having an exclusive library of games. So they still do feel like revisions. Should we, like, not talk about the Game Boy Color? Or do you guys think that it's a revision and we should talk about it? I think we're already talking about the Game Boy Color, so we might as well. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. I have, like, a, a, the list is kind of, like, in mostly chronological order. Um, I didn't put any notes. I just have, like, the listed year of release for each of these. The first... Uh, one I wanted to ask uh, that I have here though because I didn't go before the NES because let's be real we probably didn't experience any of the other stuff before the NES so like uh, but the new style NES as it's apparently known as the new Famicom the NES 101 released in 1993 commonly referred to as the top loader do you guys have any experience with the top loader and the infamous dog bone NES controller. I very little. Uh, yeah, extremely little. Um, the dog bone controller sure is something, isn't it? It. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. What me holding this? I. What is what is the relevance of this manner? I don't. I don't know. Oh, he said he's going to address the elephant in the room. And so he just decided to hold it, but and then yeah, they just decided to hold it. No, yeah. I I was talking about the you, Game Boy you, Color. I wasn't talking about the You banana. wanted to make yourself the elephant in the room. Well, I thought it was because I left this here since uh, the Dragon Quest II stream earlier today. Oh, oh watch okay. Twitch. Uh, and that's the, that's the elephant in the room. Yeah. And then, as well, in the same year, in 1993, there was the Genesis Model 2. Any experience Um, with that? This was actually the Genesis model I first played on, believe it or not. That was the family's Genesis, or my sister's Genesis, that we got to play on together. Yeah, I believe that was the, um... Was that the the one with the... Was that the one that had the six-button controller? Or would that... Or is that like a separate thing? I, I want to say they did sell the this with the six button controller because it was the same year that the six button controller came out. Because they were doing it for Mortal Kombat and like 
the other mm-hmm. fighting games that were coming out at the time because they realized that a three button controller was not going to work for these games. So I think I think you're on the right track. You're probably right. I mean, I just Googled Genesis Model 2, and the second image result is a picture of the Model 2 next to a six-button controller, okay. so well, I just kind of assumed. There you go. I think this is the one my stepbrother had uh, when we were growing up. I know it was in a Model 1. I don't think it was a Model 3. Yeah, I was so one. I didn't include the Model 3 on here, by the way, because it wasn't manufactured by Sega. I didn't do yeah. I didn't do anything that was like third party if there was like a handoff for like a revision. It has to be like a revision made by the actual like people that made the original model. So this is the only like it's, Genesis revision here. It's weird how Sega was just kind of like, yeah, okay, we'll let someone else do another version of the Genesis. Why the fuck not? Hey, it did super well in yeah. I was gonna say uh, South America, yeah, specifically Brazil. They did that. I'm not surprised yeah. by this. The Master System also did extremely well over there. Well, That's well. why I'm not yeah. surprised by this. So yeah, uh, the next one that came out was the Game Boy Pocket in 1996. I I had experience with the Game Boy Pocket, as in I held one once. Um, I've held one I mean, once. I've, I've never played I've on that. one. Oh yeah, obviously. I'm trying to remember. We had an original model. I think we had a pocket for a hot second, or someone had a pocket for a hot second. Um, but the color was the main. Outside of the original model Game Boy, that was like the main one that I had experience with, as far as the Game Boy line. Okay, and then uh, the very next year. They came out with a top loader version of the Super Nintendo, basically like the same kind of thing as like the top loader NES, but it was the new style Super NES in 1997. And uh, I had more experience with that than the top loader for the NES. I was going to say, I think if I'm remembering correctly, this is my SNES from when I was a kid. I'm pretty sure that the new style SNES was the one that I had because I'm pretty sure that my mom bought me that SNES and then my sister got the Genesis 2 because they were both because here's the thing a lot of these early model like early revisions are 100% done except for the Game Boy Pocket and the Game Boy Color but they're done because it was a cost cutting measure and it was a way for them to lower the price of the system and keep it relevant and get more people to buy it so the genesis model 2 the new style snes these were cheaper models of the system to buy so i'm pretty sure this was my snes when i was a kid it looks like the top order nes as well wasn't the uh model 2 genesis more compatible with the sega cd as well uh so it was compatible with the sega cd the same way that the original model was the model 3 is not so okay, the that's, so that's the, the model two has all of the same compatibility as the model one, but because the model three about, was made by other people, there weren't. Then what about the thirty two X? I think I'm pretty sure the thirty two X also was not compatible with the because you have to have you had to have um did you have to have a Sega CD for the thirty two X or was it just the Genesis? No, you only needed the Genesis, right? I. No, I'm I'm still no, I'm pretty sure because um the Genesis Model 3 had different connectors. I think they stripped a lot of the ports out on the back except for like just the one to like have power and video output. So I don't think that they had a I I'm not sure that the Genesis Model 3 had the ability to work with the 32X. Don't quote me on it though. I might be wrong. Jack, do you have anything to add about any of the new style SNES. Do you do you know that the that the SNES got a remodel cuz like I forgot about it until like Yeah, recently. I knew. I I knew about it. Um I don't I've played on one. I don't have any like I've never owned one. The SNES I own is an original model. Gotcha. So, all right. So what I was remembering was they made two different versions of the Sega CD, ones that worked specifically with Model 1s and ones that specifically worked with Model 2s. Oh. And then I didn't they know had that. the the Sega CDX, which was sort of a 
standalone uh, portable CD player. Okay. You learn something new every day. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I was, like, trying to remember because the Sega, the Model 2 is sort of that, it, it doesn't have the the extra stuff on the side where you can, like, uh, put in a micro, like, a headset and, like, change the volume and stuff. Uh, and I remember the Sega CD being sort of, like, a side attachment. And that's why I was like, I don't forget if they work with Model 1s, but it's because there's a sec, there's like a different version of it. It's, like, sort of like the, um... Nintendo 64 DD, where it sits on the bottom oh, of the system. Oh, right, gotcha. That's how the Model 1 Sega CDs work, is they're like a bottom attachment, whereas the Model 2 attachment is sort of like, it sits into like a cradle with the CD drive on the side. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah. All right. the uh, next one was the elephant in the room. <laughs> the Game Boy Color. This... And by elephant, I mean, this is a fantastic system, but it is in such a weird spot because it's kind of its own system because it had a huge library of exclusive games you can only play on Game Boy Color or at the very least, the early uh, era Game Boy Color games were made for the Game Boy Color in mind, but you could play them on the Game Boy. Like, uh, God, there's like... I know Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Gold Silver are like this. Um, Pokemon trading card game. Uh, there was a... Uh, I'm trying to think of the other, like... The Black Cartridges. Those, like, play on the Game Boy, but they are made for the Game Boy Color. And then the later cartridges are just clear with, like, a little bump. Those are only playable on the Game Boy Color, which I remember I owned uh, a, a Gex game that was like that. It was exclusive to Hell the Game Boy yeah. Color. It was Gex Three Deep Pocket Gecko. I I don't know. I why had I remember. Croc Two. Uh, that was I think it. I think that one was a Game Boy Color exclusive. Croc Two. Yeah. I mean, this was this was my gateway to handheld gaming. If we're gonna talk about the Game Boy Color as part of the revisions podcast, like I gotta say. The color is extremely important to my formative years when it comes to playing games. I would say as a hardware revision, it is definitely what you want to see when you go from the original to this. Yeah. Because it adds a lot. Yeah, you have a better form factor. It's a lot smaller. It takes less batteries, which I mean, I I think that was a thing with the Game Boy Pocket as well, right? Yeah. And also... had. less batteries and i mean it had color so like yeah it added color you had like a bunch of if you were playing like regular old game boy games you had like a bunch of different palettes that you could like press like the a combination of like the directionals and a and b and like select a palette at the start like i thought i thought it'd be like cool sometimes when i would be playing like pokemon red i would just like turn it to like the like the inverted color palette sometimes which had like a black screen instead of like whitish and then it'd like have everything else in like a yellow and green and it was oh it was so cool like one of my favorite things to do is like play different like color palettes jack are you there yeah okay (laughs) just making sure remember jack is a baby and had never saw anything before I, an xbox 360 <laughs> shut the fuck that's, up that's a little excessive listen listen i have used a game boy color i'm too young to have owned one but well it's yeah. stopping you now are you I, too old to go buy one I, I, no yes I'm too broke ah uh, okay that makes sense he's 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 too say. he's too old for it for it now but yeah no the game boy color i mean was super Super big. Uh, what color Game Boy Color? Oh, wait, you had the Pikachu Game Boy Color, right, Landon? Yes. Yeah. And that's like the same one that you still have to this day. I had... No, yeah, it's sitting in the drawer down there. I've had a couple different Game Boy Colors. I don't own one now. My f- original one was the Aqua one. Because, like, I thought it was cool that, like, they spelled out color in five different colors. And those five colors were the five that they had released with. So you had like a... Yeah, so you had like Aqua, you had uh, Yellow, you had Lime Green, you had Magenta and Purple. thought that was like really cool. I think Jack's going to go get his. 
I've had um. He doesn't have one. Oh, what is he getting up for? I don't know. Maybe uh, he does have one, but uh, that's it right there. I um, my sister had a clear purple one. I don't remember when they came out with the clear purple one, but I do remember that one being like super popular after they came out with that one. And then the last one I have on this first section, because I kind of split this into sections, is the PS1. Like PS1 with, with the words spelled out, which came out in 2000. Instead of the PlayStation? Instead of the PlayStation, it was called just PS1. It was odd. Uh, I think I remember this mostly because when this version of the PS1 came out, um, they were really pushing it alongside like a little screen attachment you could buy with it yep. because they really wanted you to play your PlayStation on the go. And I remember they wanted you to play it in the car. Yep, they wanted you to play it in the car. I remember I never got the screen. I wanted it. But I did get the PS1 because this was how I got my own PS1. The family had uh, played PlayStation before in the living room, and we had the original model. But I wanted my own PS1, and they weren't going to give me that PS1. So they bought me a PS1, and that's how I got PS1. I remember, Makes sense. I remember the buttons being like really easy to, like if you didn't take good care of them, like, they could get, like, stuff caked inside the buttons for, like, the eject and power. And it made it really hard to freaking turn that shit on and off and, like, open the lid. But I think that was kind of an issue with, like, the base PlayStation anyway. So, like, that's that's me not taking care of my systems properly. I don't know. Did you guys have experience with the PS1? Nope. Nope. Nah. All right. Well, now we're going to get into the good stuff, the juicy stuff. And I have this oh. I have this one split by not so much um not so much the release date, but by like the family of system. And I decided for the first one, because it is the first one that came out, the Game Boy Advance SP in 2003. Hell yeah. This one, this revolutionized handheld gaming. Maybe not entirely, like I'm sure that there was, I mean, there was other systems that came out that had, like, lit up screens, that had, like, um, there might have probably been ones with rechargeable batteries. I don't know if there was, like, a clamshell design tried before. I don't think there was a clamshell design before tried for any major handheld systems. I think that one might be, like, a new thing. But, like, adding those things together into one system, and I mean, of course, it's a Nintendo handheld, so you have that huge support for, like, a massive catalog of games from both first and third parties and being able to, you know, play all those Game Boy Advance games on this and actually have a backlight and a bat and a portable char or well, not portable rechargeable battery. Like all that was like, like this, this is probably, probably my favorite revision. Like if I'm like it's kind of hard i don't like i don't know whether i can count game boy color as a revision just because of how weird it is but like if i'm just counting like revisions this is the one that like probably my favorite it adds like it's really just the backlight that we needed like the clamshell design i could take or leave it makes it more portable and that's nice but like the the main thing here is the backlight and this was the first console revision I have ever owned. Um, and I remember being so fucking excited at the prospect of not having to sit underneath a fucking lamp to play Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, I was sold. Like, this was... When I... Like, as soon as, like, I was able to, I traded in my original GBA for an SP, and I never looked back. Literally, the only downside to the SP is that it does not have an uh, an aux port, so you can't use headphones. Yeah. Uh, if you wanted to, like, I don't know, actually be able to hear the music in public in games. Yeah, because it's like most handhelds, like, they have that headphone jack. Yeah. But it's a very simple thing that they 
omitted for some reason. Yep. But it does everything else really well, so I can't really complain too much. Yeah, I mean, I've had a Game Boy Advance before, like, the base model, before the SPs had come out. But when I got the SP, like, I could literally just play that until I fell asleep because I had the light on the screen. Now, to be fair, the original models didn't actually have a backlight. It was a front light. Like, it, like, shone onto the front, onto the screen from the front. And then they released the later models... Uh, a couple years later that actually had the backlight so it was brighter but like even just having like the front light like the regular Game Boy Advance didn't even have that so like as far as 2002 you still didn't have a lit up screen on your Nintendo handheld so I do think that the clamshell design was really good though because it's like not only did it make it easier to make portable but it also protected the screen most of the time so you didn't have to worry about, like, you put your Game Boy Advance in your pocket and it gets all scratched up. Like, you'd act, you'd have some form of protection there. So, I mean, just a great design all around. Like, I mean, if you're older, like, it might be kind of hard to, like, hold it, like, the way that you're, you have to. Like, you're basically, like, gripping it for dear life because our hands are bigger. It was meant for kids. But, like... It, like, it gets the job done. And, I mean, I have small hands, so I'm completely unaffected by it. Like, it doesn't it doesn't bother me that it... Because I know that the form factor kind of, like... That... <laughs> you got you got two SPs. I got two SPs. I don't know what well. you're talking about. This is this is one SP unit. That is two SPs. And, I have two SPs uh-huh. as well. And I, I didn't use... I, show, show the screen, Landon. I did not... I did not bring mine to. See, you can see you, you put it on. You, you, boy, it's pretty. You put, it's pretty weird how the uh, you cut it. the screens kind of split down the middle like that. I like how Landon. Well, they were trying to do the DS thing yeah. before the DS. Yeah, you know. Yeah, okay. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, like this. This was one of my favorites. Did you have anything to add, Landon? Yeah, the Game Boy Advance SP was so good, I skipped the original model and went straight to it. I mean, that's fair. I never owned an original model. There was a kid at uh, school that had one and had Pokemon, I don't know, Ruby or Sapphire. I looked at it and I was like, that's gross. Throw that away. I remember you telling us that story, yeah. I can't remember which podcast it was. Like a year later or whatever, Yep. the SP came out and I was like, oh, perfect. A, A good system. (laughs) <laughs> Game Boy Advance SP is great. So the next thing, the next revision we're going to talk about is the Game Boy Micro, which came out two years later. And I wanted you here for this one because I have something very interesting to say. So, like the Game Boy Micro, back when it came out, yes, it was it was a really weird decision. Because keep in mind, 2005, the DS was already out. And if you wanted to play Game Boy Advance games, you could just play You had a Game Boy Advance SP and you had the DS as well. So, like, why did you need a micro? That said, I think that the micro, in retrospect, was a genius idea on Nintendo's part. Not in the moment. No, let, let, let me explain. Let me explain. Yeah, the SP is, like, small enough that it's portable and that's fine and all. But, like, back in, like, 2005, right, like, there, I I think that people had more, like, pocket space. So, like, people had more pocket space because at most, like, maybe you had a Nokia 3310 or whatever Nokia was out at the time. And those things are kind of dinky. Like, they're small. So, like, there's that. And then you'd probably have, like, what, a pair of, like, little, like, head, like, wired earbuds that's not going to take up well, a whole lot of space. And everyone was wearing cargo shorts. And everyone so was you wearing had one thousand pockets. Exactly. Everyone was wearing like big pants with lots of pockets. So like you had all that pocket space. So like you didn't need this tiny like micro back in two thousand five. But now pocket space for pants is like at a premium. And what is the smallest form factor to play Game Boy games on? The micro. It is so small that you can fit it in your pocket with your earbuds that have a case and still not take up that much space in your pocket. And 
they were smart because the face plates have a screen protector built part as part of the face plate. So you don't have to worry about the actual screen getting damaged because there's the cover there in front of it. So they were genius in thinking like like they made the Game Boy Micro as if it's weird. So like when you make a product like a consumer electronic, usually when you make a good one, it's supposed to answer a question, like answer a problem that people are having. The Game Boy Micro in 2005 was not doing that. Nobody was asking the question, can we make a Game Boy even smaller? Like nobody was asking that. But in 2020, 2024, like I think that the Game Boy Micro is genius for the sole reason that it answers that question from 15 years ago that they were answering. <laughs> I, See, it, the Game Boy Micro would make so much more sense if it was a system being re released today that was like an anniversary release. Yeah. Like a classic console. Right, right. Like they yeah. were doing with the NES and Super Nintendo and like the PlayStation 1, the Genesis, the Game Gear. All of those got those, you know, anniversary uh, classic consoles. If the Game Boy Micro was just that today... It'd be, it'd be literally, like, the perfect, like, revision to just randomly release in, like, the 2020s. Yeah. Like... But it's not. But, un so, like, all of the stuff that I said doesn't really matter because you have to rely on the secondary market and, like, the prices for all that shit is out of control. But on a conceptual level, it's like they were playing 4D chess. It's, it's, it's really hard to explain how I feel about the micro. But, like, it's a really I, cool idea. I wonder how much money they lost with the micro probably a lot because like they did, they sold no. what was it like two million out of the 80 something million game boy advances that are out there that's that's a drop well, in maybe the it had a really small bat batch run so yeah in comparison so who knows I regret not getting a micro when I had the opportunity to. Like, probably a decade ago, I could have gotten one for, like, 50 bucks. They're 150 plus uh, dollars now, and that's the low end. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I jumped on it at the time. Like, I really... But I already, had an, I already had an SP, and I'm like, eh, I don't really need it. Yeah, like, at it, like, looking back, I really wish I got one. I still... Excuse me. It's still on my bucket list. I want to get a Game Boy Micro because, like... It'd be the perfect Game Boy to take with me to work because I have, like I was saying, I have all that pocket space, like, t taken up that even an SP feels a little clunky to have in my pocket. But, like, if I had a micro, I could just be like, okay, Game Boy Micro, throw that in there. But it, it, they're expensive. They're really, really expensive. Yeah. I forget. Do the micros use batteries versus a rechargeable? They're rechargeable, but they have, they, they, they have their they own have separate charger. Thing. That is different to oh, everything to everything else. Lame. I, I lame. I want to say it's actually just a standard mini USB, but it's it's Nintendo. It's probably not. It's probably like some slightly different thing, like they like to do. Yeah. Also during that time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think we mentioned this in the. I don't remember if we mentioned this in the DS podcast or not, but the uh, the Game Boy Advance SP has the same charging port as the uh, the original the DS. DS. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, yep. So the micro is in the same boat as like the DS Lite, where like they have like their own separate charger. But the problem with the micro is that it almost sold like nothing. So like, uh, anyway, the next one um, came out a little before the Game Boy Micro, but it was a different system. So we're gonna move away from the Game Boy Advance line now, and that is the PS2 Slim. And I use quotes because even though the Slim is what we usually call these revised P PlayStation models. Sony's never actually really called them that. We just kind of just adopted it and like it's just been a thing. So like the new PS2 that came out in 2004, the PS2 Slim, uh, it was pretty popular. It was it like, so like the PS2 was like kind of big and like the PS2 Slim is like this kind really, of? really dink, yeah, really. I was going to say. Yeah. Like, the PS2 Slim is, like, this really dinky console. Like, it is maybe the size of, like, a couple DVD boxes, and that's it. It's it's barely I, the size of a laser to read your discs. Yeah. I, I was going to say, like, Sony has kind of a bad, like, 
A lot of people talk about like the PS3 or the PS5 specifically, but like Sony has kind of a bad habit of making their first model of consoles like fucking humongous. Oh yeah. And then they release like a slim model shortly thereafter. Um I own a PS2 slim. That's my PS2 as well as I have the slim now. My original one mm-hmm. wasn't. I had the original model, but I've been using a PS2 slim. It's interesting because the PS2 Slim doesn't have what the PS2 did because the PS2 had a pop-out tray, but the PS2 Slim has the typical, like, top-loading tray that, like, flips open and you put the Mm. disc in that way. So they had a little bit of design differences. I know that the reason that they came out with it was because around that time, they had managed to shrink the board down. And they also wanted to, like, the PS2 Slim slightly has better specs, like, very slightly. And it was mostly because uh, older PS2s could often have, like, disc reading problems. So they, like, tried to fix that when they released the Slim model. And I haven't used the discs that I really had a tough time with on the original PS2, like Rogue Galaxy. The disc for Rogue Galaxy on a regular PS2... I don't know what it is. Like, they had a really hard time reading properly. And I I hope that they fixed that, that with the Slim, but I wouldn't know because I haven't played Rogue Galaxy on a PS2 Slim yet. Well, there's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow? Yeah, you can play tomorrow on your PS2 Slim. I don't have it with me. I don't have a... I mean, I don't have a physical copy of Rogue Galaxy. Well... Go get one? This eBay. eBay? Yeah eBay, Mercari, just look look one up. Just buy one. Yeah, just fucking buy one. Come on, what's stopping you? All right. Money? I mean, Rogue Galaxy probably costs nothing, to be honest with you. It's like, you can get it on the PS4 and PS5 digitally for like $10, so I don't think that a physical copy is all that much. Uh, so moving on to the next generation of uh, systems and their revisions... We got the DS, which had the DS Lite in 2006, the DSi in 2009, and the DSi XL in 2010. We talked about these a lot on the DS podcast, but is there anything we want to add to that? Because we, there's a lot we could say. Yeah, I mean, we kind of said a lot. If, if, If you've listened to the DS podcast, then we'd be repeating ourselves if we just kind of went off on the DS. Yeah. The different DS models. Um... Let's make it quick I don't know. and easy. All Pros right. for the DS Lite. I don't know. Cons. Everything about it. Every- yeah, everything about it. Everything about it. DS Lite. Pros. I don't know. Cons. Everything about it. You said DS, DS Lite XL? Uh, <laughs> he said DS Lite twice and then DS yeah. Lite yeah. XL. <laughs> Good job. DS yeah. Lite um, XL. Oh, that's great. I don't know. Classic. Haven't played Classic. it yet. Thank you, Mysterious Brown Liquid. Mysterious Brown. I wonder what that could be. But yeah, no, so like, I am... It's definitely not a mixture of two things, one of which is alcoholic. Yeah. So no I am fucking way. I am someone who has probably gotten a ton of experience with the DS Lite, and even I think that over the years, I think the DS Lite's kind of overrated. Like, I've broken so many just from normal usage and not, like, damaging it purposely. Like, it's just normal wear and tear. Just breaks it down. So, like... Yeah. I, like, I get they it. They are uh, it w- not built to last. It was... It was an easy way to sell the system at the time because, like, the price of the system had gone down, too. Because the DS lights were $130. Um, I mean, I don't think the price went down that much. I think, weren't the regular DSs $150 or so at the time? Something like that. So, like... That sounds right. So like, I want to say so. So, like, the price didn't go down a whole lot. But, like, I mean, the form factor, it is a lot smaller. The brightness is better on the screens. But, like... Is it really worth it for a handheld that's just going to break on you in, like, two months? I don't know, man. Maybe not two months. No, I, I, I mean, know. I'm exaggerating. It's more like... I 
I still have the same DS light that I got back in 2000. What year did it come? 2007, right? Um, which one do you have? Uh, what do you mean? They came out with a different. So they came out with two waves of DS lights. There was the oh. there was the regular colored ones that were like glossy all around. And then they came out with the second batch that had a matte finish underneath. Oh, okay, no, mine mine is an original. Okay, so yeah, that that's what I was trying to say because I have. Yeah, what's the model number on yours? I could go grab it if you were curious. Uh, model number USG zero zero one. Mine does say 2006, but I know that the I don't know if like these came out later in the year or if this is just trademarked to the DS Lite's overall release. Because I know these came out after. All right, Jack, go get yours. I know these came God out after the um. But yeah, <laughs> Al said he wants to see Jack get up again. So yeah, uh, so the you're welcome, Al. I mean, the DS Lite, it's it's fine, but it's like. I'm actually more interested in getting a regular DS than a DS Lite at this point. Just because, like, I'd rather have the the model that'll last me. But I still want one that'll play Game Boy Advance games. And the DS Lite, the, excuse me, the DSi does not do that. That said, I did have a DS... You mean this absolute tank? That absolute tank. The DS... It has gone through World War II and back. And it still works perfectly fine because that model was built to last. Uh, I have the D- I had a DSi, and I think the DSi is a pretty good system if you're only going to play DS games on it because you get the same quality screens and even slightly bigger and the same form factor as the DS, but the build quality on the DSi, from my experience, is a lot better. So, like... If you're trying to play DS games, like, the DSi is great. The DSi XL is really weird, though. I've held one, they're clunky, and I don't like them. I will say, um, the DSi is my, like, DS of choice for playing DS games. Yeah. Uh, because it has the original screen resolution, and it doesn't, like... Stretch it it out. It feels good. Feels good. Anyway... I got my fucking DS Lite, and the model number is, uh, it should be like, where the hell did you, f- it's near the where top, the hell did you find it's it? near the top underneath, like, it'll say for consumer oh, yep. service, and US, then, USG001, oh, yep, same one, that's weird, so they, they use the same model number, they just released, uh, different colors, but these colors came out, I know these colors came out a little later, so, I don't know. But classic. Because like the the SPs going back to that, uh, the ones that have the actual backlight, not just the front light. Those have, have a different mine. model number. They do. Mine has a front light. Yeah, the uh, the Game yeah. Boy Advance SPs, the front light ones are AGS 001, and then the backlight versions yep. are AGS one oh one. I have I have both models, so I do know that. It's very interesting that they did that. Uh anything else uh, yeah. about the DSs? Uh, Go listen to the no, podcast. I mean, listen to the podcast. We talked about these episode. a sh- a shitload in that episode. And then moving on to the other end of the spectrum, there was the revisions for the PSP, which, in Sony's infinite wisdom, much like uh, they do for a lot of other things, they didn't really heavily advertise them as like revision, like as like their own. Like it was just like this is the new PSP. Here you go. But you had the PSP 2000 in 2007, and then we got the PSP 3000 in 2008. Let's talk about those first, because the, the, there's this, there's another thing that came out right after that. But these were the revisions. Oh. For, these were the yes, revisions. There is. There's, these were the revisions for the PSP. The major differences are that they slimmed down the form factor, because the regular PSP. I don't know if you guys remember the regular PSPs, because I've had experience with the PSP 1000. Those things are chonkers. Like, those have the same chonk to them as, like, the reg- the base DS model. They're fat. They're, they they feel good. They're bulky. But, like, the screen quality, much like the DS to DS Lite and onward, wasn't as good. Like, the screen quality is much better on the PSP 2000 and 3000. But it wasn't, like, a brightness thing necessarily. It was, like... 
it's, it's kind of hard. So they used different screens. Uh, I don't remember the type of screens that they used, but they used different screens for the PSP 2000 and 3000. I know that the PSP 3000 people have had their, um, have had like their criticisms of though, because the screen quality would like kind of cause like blur that like people didn't like. But like, other than that screen difference, there's and like the the uh, the slimming down. There's there's not a whole lot to say about the PSP revisions. Like they were they were just there to make the system cheaper and slimmer and update a few small things and like that's kind of it. I've had experience with multiple different PSP models, but to be honest, outside of knowing that I had one that was a one thousand. And one that's either a 2,000 or 3,000. I couldn't tell you, like, the differences between them. Uh, so, like, the biggest thing between the screens is uh, the 2,000 had a thinner, brighter LCD screen. Okay. Whereas the 3,000, uh, the LCD screen, so they were all LCD. Okay. None of them went to LLED. Um, but the 3,000 had increased color range five times the contrast ratio, half pixel response time, and uh, sub-pixel structure, anti-reflective technology to reduce out outdoor glare. Interesting. So they were, like, the screens, like, the screen was huge, big changes, I would say, uh, for the 3000. Yeah. I do, re I do remember, though, that people did still have complaints about it because there was, like, blurring of images when like there's a lot of stuff in motion that wasn't quite there with like the PSP 2000 but I mean it's a use case scenario so like I don't know I I think I barely used uh I barely I, I probably have like no experience with the 3000 uh a year after the 3000s though we got the PSP Go in 2009 it is a digital only version of the PSP. There is no PSP UMD. go to the trash can. There is no UMD drive. And More like PSP go to hell. It's, and die. It's so. Because it sucks. And. I have to. I have to remember. Because the PSP had like all of these really bad. Uh, like have all these. Yeah. Okay. I think my problem with the PSP go. Isn't even that it was digital only. Because to be honest like. I had quite a lot of digital games on my PSP because, like, you could, like, the, like, the PlayStation Store was actually kind of robust at the time. And, like, you get and you could download stuff off your PS3 and then move it to the PSP. No, my issue with the PSP Go is it's a Blackberry. Like, it's it's so like it like opens up and then the buttons are underneath it. Why? Yeah, it's a slide. It's so weird. I don't like that. Yeah. Like, why? Would it just feel it, it. It feels like a phone, and not like a high end phone no. either. It's a piece of shit. Like, like the 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 regular PSP is fine because it's like the buttons are on the side. It's like the Game Boy Advance. The buttons are on the sides. You have a nice firm grip. The screen's in the middle. Everything's nice. The PSP Go isn't like that because it's like it's got like this SP thing to it, but like. It doesn't feel like a structurally sound because you don't have this thing devoted to the screen. It, like it slides up out. It's it, I don't know. It's weird. I, I don't like this thing. I I don't know. Trash. Trash. I, I don't like that they switched. Uh, does it use a different memory stick or did it use the same memory stick? Um, I don't remember, but I think. Hold on. I have I have the. I can bring up the. T -t 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 -t. Let me just look it up on Wikipedia. I um, I don't remember there being like a compatibility difference between the PSP and PSP Go, but that is something that could have happened. So no, it used the M2 uh, memory sticks. But I forget if the the original ones used that or not. I was gonna say all I do remember the proprietary stuff with the uh Um it doesn't say anything for the 
Oh Wait, yeah, on. the older yeah. ones use the memory stick pro du duo. Yeah, and okay, yep, yeah, and instead of the the micro, uh, the, uh, micro is PM2. for the PS. So, so there yeah. was a memory. There was a difference. See, that's one of the reasons. Like, this is why the PSP Go sucks. Like, it's it is so niche that it's like niche within niche. It's like, who was this for? Like, who? <laughs> Like, I, don't, I don't know. Now, I will say, I believe the, the because of when the Go came out, those memory cards were, I think typically they went to bigger sizes too. Yeah. So you could have more memory on it. Yeah. Which is good if you're doing a digital-only system. But this is a digital-only system in 2009. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, and not only was it in 2009, but like, that's actually kind of late for the PSP to be doing this, right? Because the PSP had already been out since, like, the same year as the DS, 2004, uh, 2005. Yep. So, like, they waited four and a half years to go with an all-digital version when, like... I I feel like it would be... I feel like it would be remembered more fondly if it came out, like, closer to the original PSP's release date. Or even like just released alongside the original PSP, I, they would never would have done that. But like, just but that seems that's like something that like you know console makers today do. It's like yeah. there's a disc version and then a digital only version. Um, the thing is, is that it was five years after the fact, and by that point, everyone had moved on. Yeah, because like this was a point in time when the DS, like the PSP itself has already lost most of its traction like the bsp was not selling all that well compared to the ds at this point and like most people were paying more attention to the xbox 360 and ps3 like the psp was just kind of that ship had kind of sailed like i know that they were trying to address an issue because a lot of people had issues with like umds but it, it, like you said, it was kind of like just a little too late. And yeah, like you mentioned, Landon, I didn't even remember the whole part with like the memory card thing. Like having a different memory card, like that just makes it a barrier for people who already have a PSP. Because it's like, oh, well, now I have to buy this other memory card on top of the PSP just to have a new PSP. Like that's, that's such an inconvenience. Like if they had at least managed to somehow keep the same like memory units maybe it would have done a little better change the form factor so it wasn't this ugly blackberry-esque design like i mean they did it on purpose because blackberries were popular at the time but that doesn't mean oh, it yeah. works for a game console that doesn't work for a game no. system and I, I think a lot of people felt that because the psp go bombed so. yeah i mean this is like one of the most infamous yeah. console revisions of all time now there is another I, release of the psp but i didn't list it because we didn't get it over here it was over yeah, in europe it was a pal yeah it was a pal only release they had what was known as the psp street but it was officially called the psp e1000 and it was just like a cheapo version of the psp for them to sell at like a super low price and like that was it so like i don't know um I, I think it's funny that I googled PSP E1000 and like not under Google images but like when you through regular Google like just off to the side a little bit the first picture I see is one of a PSP playing Pokemon Fire Red <laughs> it's you can't escape it the PSP is literally just a Game Boy Advance emulator <laughs> it really is like, the, I mean really we're just we're still talking about the Game Boy Advance here aren't we <laughs> you know to be yeah. honest, probably, yeah. The PSP Go is the worst Game Boy Advance revision. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... Um, um, what's next? The same generation, uh, moving on to the home consoles now, uh, all three of the major systems this generation, uh, they got revisions. I didn't. We didn't talk a whole lot about them in the major like console wars episodes, so we'll have time to talk about them here. First up, though, there was three different revisions for the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 came out with an Elite model in 2007. 
There was the Xbox 360S in 2010, and then the Xbox 360E in 2013. E. E. Uh. Um. So I don't. So, what's that? I was gonna say I don't know if I have any experience with the Elite model. Really? I don't. I don't know. I'm trying to remember because, like, my friends had base models, and I think one had an Xbox 360 S, but I don't know about the Xbox 360 Elite. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up. Um, maybe it's not the. O- Did you- is the Elite different from like the Slim, like the glossy like? The oh the glo- that the glo- that glossy one that's the S. Oh, okay, so that's the slim. The then. yeah the the Xbox yeah the okay, Xbox 360 okay. S. That's what like, that's what they that's what Microsoft does. They yeah. actually they they it's well, technically the slim model, but they just call it every, S. Everyone called it the slim, yeah. like. But um uh, no the but, Xbox okay, 360 so, Elite was the same as the base Xbox 360, but it was in black. Okay, I. Is there anything different about it aside from it just being? A uh, I believe there was color? more. There was more storage as well. Oh, who cares? <laughs> I you think. can buy hard drives for three sixties. Yeah, like they're you know not hard to replace. I'm trying. I know that that there was like a few other like differences, but mm-hmm. why don't you talk? Did about the elite? Your... Did the elite fix the? Did the elite still have red ring? No, the elite. Or was that not a? Or, wait, uh, I think they. The elite came out like two years after. Uh, it was two years the original after. Model. It was like early 2007, so not even a full two years. Oh, okay. The arcade was closer to the two year, and the arcade, I believe, was the one that uh did not have any internal memory. Yeah. It was like the replacement for the original model. Right. Um, mm. And that one, pretty much all of them have some form of, like, red ring issue. Yeah. Um, they don't really fix it until the you S. get into the, the actual S and E models. Mm-hmm. Well, I have no experience with the Elite. I never knew anyone who owned one everyone I knew had a fucking slim though like I have a very a ton of experience with the slim and I think just in terms of what it fixes from the original model probably the single biggest upgrade uh, in terms of like a revision versus an original because the slim the S doesn't red ring it has a more compact hard drive. It's very easy to just take out and take to another friend's house and just plug it into that 360S. Um, they're much smaller. It's very sleek looking design. Uh, really zero downsides at all compared to the original model as oh, yeah. far as I can remember. Like the Xbox 360S is probably like at least it's in my the opinion, definitive, yeah, it's the it's definitive. It's like the definitive 360, 360 model, 100. Uh, the one that you were taught, you were talking about, Landon, was known as the core model. By the way, that's the one that they have replaced with the uh, the arcade. Because the the core model was yeah, like the, there was the original. There was a core, and then there was an arcade and elite. Yeah, but the what? But they basically had replaced like the core model with the um with the arcade. Yeah, with the arcade. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the one that was, like, the lower price point. Yes. I think one of the bigger things is that one... Did that one also come with HDMI out? No. Uh, in fact, the... Wait, are you asking about the arcade or the core? Because the core, I know, definitely didn't, because the... Yeah. The origi- so the, the arcade also added uh, HDMI out. Okay. Yeah, because the original 360 model was only component. Yeah, it's yeah. it's so weird that like the original 360 models they didn't have HDMI even though they were like HD compatible. They didn't have yeah. the actual ports for it. So like you needed yeah. to get a newer version, a newer model to have that support. 
Yeah, but the I mean, original model, the which te- I think technically was the Xbox 360 Pro or Premium, and the Core. Those were the two original like releases. The Core being the cheaper one without like as much hard drive. Uh, they didn't support HDMI. It was hmm. just uh, it was just uh, the component, as you said. Which I guess like at the time it made sense because like I mean. Microsoft probably knew. Late 2004. Yeah, like, most people didn't have an HD TV, but, like, they probably should have future... I mean, I don't know how much more that would have costed their systems to, like, make, Well, but... They sort of future-proofed it by having... It's compatible with HD TVs that support component out, and a lot of HD TVs at the time supported, like, component, like, the... the full component... Um, the yeah. like yeah so so there's composite the there's com- yeah, there's composite and component yeah. composites the red white yeah. yellow components the red components green components the yeah all of that so like you could still have HD like high definition just not HDMI yeah like out and th- there is a big difference it's kind of hard to explain but like I've seen the difference by using PS2s uh, if you use the composite. On a like a flat screen HD TV, that shit is fuzzy as hell. If you oh, use yeah. a com- if you use a component, you do get a lot of jagged edges, but it is like a crystal clear image. Otherwise, it is there. The difference is night and day. It is such an upgrade. Like to say nothing of like actually like using an HDMI cable. So, it's it's kind of hard to talk about the 360 revisions because they kind of came out with a lot of them. There's a yeah. ton of them. Uh, but the only ones that, the only one that really mattered, uh, was the the S S model, like Jack was saying. Yeah. The E model's fine, but it came out so late that it was just them trying to keep the 360 relevant. And they, didn't didn't the E model also only have, like, come with four gigabytes of hard drive space? I don't remember, Mm. but I just... It kind it came with the same, like, removable, uh, hard drive that the S models could use. It's just so weird. Uh, Cause it's like, but it like didn't have a permanent hard drive in it. And yeah, I think the, um, I think the E was like when that came out, it was meant to be just like kind of a budget version of the 360 because, you know, it was super late in the life cycle. Uh, it only had a four gigabyte hard drive. Um, it uh, d- well, the Xbox 360 E, uh, did have a 250 gigabyte model. Oh, okay. But I the My thing bad. the thing I I think there might have been a, a small a lower end version. Um, but the the thing about it is that they designed it in a really bad way because it literally looks like the Xbox One at the time. Like, how are you it going to kinda, release? How, it kind of does. Like, how are you going to release a new system that's coming out that you're already doing damage control for? By the way, we don't need to talk about the Xbox One's launch period and then you release a new version of your older system that looks like the new one like like i don't i don't know man but yeah it literally just it, they they made it like boxy and everything so like it looks just like the and it's it wasn't even cheaper no like it was the same as like USD, it went for, like, the same as, like, the glossy white, uh, or, like, the 250 gigabyte of the 360S. So what the fuck, Microsoft? Yeah. The the Xbox... had some spare parts lying around. The Xbox 360S had a 4 gigabyte model. I'm trying to look here. I'm not... The E also had a 4 gigabyte model. Okay. Yeah. It, you could, you could... you basically do the same thing with the S models where you could put in like the 320 or like some of the other size gigabyte like yeah. hard drives. There was just one that you could also buy with a 250 in there. That's mm-hmm. so weird. Yeah. Anyway, uh, do we have anything else we want to say about the Xbox 360 models? Nah. They're, they're, no, they're, it they're, smells. They're, they're really weird. They're all over the place. Uh, the PS3 had two revisions in its lifespan. The first major one is the PS3 well, Slim. 
two, I said. I don't two, know if I'd say there was two. two I said two major. Their keyword, major. Two. Like the 360, there's about 1,000 revisions yeah. for the, this console. Well, the thing yeah. is, is they came in there. There's they came in batches. So the thing is, is like I'm not listing like you know this model had this much space. This model had this much space. This model was slightly different because of like the major yeah. revisions. Because this is where things got really weird. They were doing a, but there's there's a difference between revisions and configurations. There's there's a lot of configurations. But anyway, the PS3 saw the PS3 Slim in 2009. Slim, quote unquote. It's sli- it's really slim it, compared to the original it, PS3. It, well, I, I'm qu- very slim compared to it. <coughs> I'm mainly I'm mainly using quotes because again, not the official name. Yeah, not- it was just called PS3. And it is weird that it's not the official name because that like everyone calls them that. Like oh, it yeah. is the slim model. It's like one of those like Mandela effects where like everybody just calls it that. That's just what everybody knows it at, but that's not technically what it is. It's weird. Yeah. But that came out in 2009 and that was pretty much in my opinion this was like this was how the PS3 actually like came back from the ashes cuz like Yes, they were finally starting to get games out, but they still needed a new model that they didn't have 15 bajillion different ports and pieces of hardware inside that were causing the costs to be so sky high. So they managed to cut a lot of like the fluff out. Unfortunately, they did sacrifice PS2 compatibility in the process, but they gutted a lot of the extra crap the PS3 had for like ports and drivers and stuff. And they got us this new version that doesn't yellow light of death that much at all. And it's like half the price. So people could buy it now. (laughs) Yeah. I uh, do not have any experience with the original 360, or excuse me, the original PS3 model. So I can't say for sure. But the PS3 Slim uh, is a solid revision. Like, I understand, like, the removing the PS2 backwards compatibility is a downgrade. Uh, but it's for the sake of making the console more affordable. Because part of the reason why the 360, or the, god damn it, the PS3 was originally so expensive was because it was backwards compatible with PS1 and PS2 games. Oh, it, there's a lot of factors. Uh, I mean, it was because I mean, of yeah, all of that, that was, compatibility. Blu-ray ex- was expensive at the time. I mean, it was one of the biggest reasons, though. Yeah. And removing that helped alleviate some of the cost for... Uh, I do want to say, not all models of the original PS3... Had that compatibility, had yeah. PS2 support. It was True. it was mainly what the sixty gigabyte model. It was the, the sixty. The, the 80, original. Right? It was the tw- the original twenty gigabyte, sixty gigabyte, and then yeah. the second wave, sixty gigabyte, eighty gigabyte. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ones that did. Because you have an original uh, eighty gigabyte model, right? Uh, I have a third wave. Oh, okay. Original model. So. The third wave ones removed all of that. Those ones, you could tell they were a third wave because they had two USB support instead of oh, the okay. four USB yeah, support. Yeah, they, so, they had so much extra shit on there. There was like, what, SD yes. card reader, everything. Yeah. So all of the original, original, and the second wave had four USB ports. And so any of those ones have some amount of uh, PS2 backwards compatibility. The original original ones had the full hardware compatibility, whereas the next two had partial software based. But like the original ones, you could use like a lot of like the hardware for PS2 on mm-hmm. it. They were crazy. <laughs> it's kind um, of insane how they just were just like, yeah, we need four USB ports on our console. Yep. And like, I mean. That was just Sony at the time. Like, they were trying to really feature pack the crap out of the PSP and PS3. Like, they did it with both systems, and it was, like... It's part of the reason why they were so expensive. Because, like, the PSP 
was like two hundred and fifty dollars for a handheld at the time. Like it was insane. So yeah. like it was it was just a Sony thing. Like they were like, hey, people will buy this if we just pack a bunch of stuff in it, even if it costs way too much money. So no, like the PS3 Slim was like, in my opinion, probably one of the best revisions a console has ever had. Just on the It's a it's a pretty good one. Like it's it's really good when it comes to the uh the durability. Like the PS3 Slims just work extremely well. They I've never had an issue with a PS3 Slim in my life. Like Yeah. I've still got the same if, one that I had now. If I wasn't given the PS3 that I was given, I would own a Slim. Out of all of the different models and variants of each model that there is, uh, I would own probably, like, a, I would own a Slim. One of the, like, different hard drive size Slims. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. And those, the hard drive sizes also were pretty ridiculous considering, like, so we talked about, like, some of the Xbox 360s went up to 250 gigabytes. Keep in mind, this is a generation when you didn't have to install large chunks of game onto the system. Yeah. You just had a lot of free space. So, like, this was an insane amount at the time. Yeah. Uh, back then, hard drives were mostly just for digital games. Yeah. And, and, like, and updates and, DS and DLC. Like, that's it. Yeah. But, like... Yeah. Back then, like, 250 went a long fucking way. Like, I was... I remember being worried when I first got my PS3 Slim. Because I mine is a 160-gigabyte uh, model. I remember I being, like, kind of worried that uh, when I started buying, like, digital games, I remember thinking, like, oh, man, I hope I don't run out of space anytime soon. I never came even close. No. And, like, I, PS, PS3 games aren't even that large most of the time, especially compared yeah. to now. Like, the biggest ones maybe will go upwards of, like, you know, I think they like can go 10. up. I think they can go up to 50, but most of them are hovering in the 5 to 10 range. Yeah. Yeah, it's unless you get to the, like the super late end PS3 releases, the um, like us. Grand Theft Auto V, The Last of Us, um, like the last couple Call of Duties that came out for it. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that where they still like that's when they really started doing like the more modern stuff where you have to like do like more major installs mm -hmm. or had huge updates. Um, but you could get away with having like the smaller size. For the slim, like the or like if you go it because we haven't talked about it really the super slim or the the new K model, uh, yeah that one with the sliding top. I mean you had I, a model that had 500 gigabytes re, like you could buy retail yeah which is a lot yeah <laughs> I say this as a person with a PS3 with a two terabyte hard drive in it. Because they're really easy to, to switch out. All you need to do is buy a two half inch uh, or yeah uh, hard drive that you would use for a laptop, and you can just put it in the case and go. Yeah, mm -hmm. credits um, credits to Sony at that like for the PS3 and PS4, it's not hard to install a new hard drive. Like they just they make it so it's like oh just open it up and just pop it in. There you go, more space. Yay, you did it. Like. The, the PS5 is also the yep. the same way as yep. far as like adding space. You just take off the cover. Uh, there's like a screw, and then you uh, plug in your extra um, internal. Right. Um, but yeah. Um, overall, uh, do you guys ha ever use or see the the new K? The Super or Slim. The, the Super Slim. Oh yeah. yeah. So let me uh, uh, mention that. So there is the Super Slim came out in 2012. Um. That one is the one that has, like, the tray that, like, is on the top that, like, pops to the side to put the disc in. It's weird. Yeah, um, my friend, one of my friends, like, got a PS3, like, super late, uh, because he had a 360 for most of that generation's, uh, cycle. Uh, so he got a PS3 super late just because it was relatively cheap, and it was a super slim. Um, they feel weirdly cheap i will say no, like the sliding they tray. are 
very cheap. I was gonna yeah. say like the I was gonna say like tray is like very. It feels super fragile. Like I could break it if I moved it too hard. Like it's I. So I had a little bit of and experience it, because I had a friend that I, I lived. Oh, go ahead. Uh, just one more thing, and it wasn't like it. If I remember correctly, there wasn't like a button you could press to open it. There is. Oh, there is. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I just remember no, like, and that's sliding it open manually. That is the issue. Is a lot of people don't realize that there is actually a button to open the tray. You only have to slide it close. Mm -hmm. And so most people will manually slide it open and close, and that's what breaks the the loader. Gotcha. <laughs> and that that so like I'll I'll get to a point on that. So like. My friend, I, I lived with a friend of mine for a little bit, and his PS3 was a super slim. And I remember wanting to play games with him on the PS3. And I remember I didn't know that there was a button that popped that tray out. And, like, even now, I feel like that was just a real, like, if this many people are having this issue, that's not a consumer problem. That is a manufacturing mistake. Like, they did not think it through to either make the button more presentable or make it so that the button also closes the tray. Like, if you have to manually close the tray, then people aren't going to really think of, like, oh, this button closes and opens. Like, no, they're just going to be like, okay, move move tray, open, move tray, close. And then they break their PS3s because Sony didn't think this through. Like... Yeah. I... Like, the one part... The Super Slim is a decent model PS3 because it doesn't have the same hardware failure rate that the original models do. Yeah. But at the same time, they are very cheap, and there is no reason to go with a Super Slim over a Slim model. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, the PS3 Slim has all the same features as the Super Slim. But it also doesn't have that asinine cheap design. Like when you buy a slim, like you can feel still a premium product. Like I remember using the Super Slim and it was just not the best experience. I mean, it's not the worst hardware Sony's ever made. Obviously, we just talked about the PSP Go earlier. So like there's a low bar to clear. And thankfully the PS3 Super Slim clears it. But it's not a desirable thing. It's a it's serviceable. But, um, yeah, it's uh, not the most well-designed All right, and then revision. Uh, one more. Uh, the Wii also did have two revisions, two major revisions. And then we're going to have... And then we're, we're going to have a... We're going to have a little... We're going to do our little break after we talk about them because we're probably not going to talk about these for very long. Uh, in 2010, they came out with the Wii Family Edition, which Boo. is literally the Wii that removes GameCube support. Boo! Just strips her right out. It is Stupid. otherwise effectively the exact same system, but I think they also did it to like they they it was cheaper if I remember right. Uh, I mean, yeah, but like it's, it's at yeah, this it's, point it was not hard to find a Wii for an affordable price. Exactly. By the time so like this it was pointless. Out. And then in 2013, th this is after the Wii U, uh, the Wii Mini. Which the looks like a fucking Wii <laughs> Mini. It, that thing is so. Oh, we want to talk about cheap looking plastic ass, crappy see, design console. See, here's here's the thing about revising the Wii. The Wii is already perfect. You don't need to revise it. This is one of the. I think this might be like the one case where it's really hard to recommend any of the later models the ds like we we can go back and we can, forth yeah and say, we can you make know, an argument the there DSi are ups maybe. and downs to each version of the ds but but all of them are serviceable in their own way the original model just makes like there's no reason to not just have an original model yeah for the wii yeah it's yeah. Like, and so like that that's that's just the issue with the wii revisions it's like like you said, the Wii was already perfect. Like, and it was the one th of the three systems. Like, the Xbox 360, horrible hardware failure rates. Original PS3, 
hardware failure, and super expensive, had way too much shit in them. The Wii was literally fine as is. You didn't need to change anything. Yeah. So why did they do it? It's because they wanted oh. to take out the GameCube support to cut costs. That's all. That's all it was. L literally. And, like, I get it from the perspective of, like, yeah. releasing it so that, like, you know, just to get some Wii sales out there, like, anyone who might not have a Wii still can get one. But, like, by that point, fucking everybody had a Wii. And even then, the original models of... Or, we original models were not hard to find. No. Like, you could find... You can find them used just about anywhere. And, for like... super cheap. And the Wii Mini was just, like, why? At that point, the Wii's sales were dead in the water. Yeah. And the Wii U was already out. Like, why? The Wii, the Wii Mini is so fucking stupid. It's, it's so bad. It's like, probably... We talked about, okay, I mentioned how the 360S is probably, like, the single biggest upgrade to an original model. I think the Wii Minis might be the biggest downgrade. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because you have, also, I didn't mention this part. The Wii Mini also removed online functionality. Yep. You don't even, like, so, you, it literally just plays Wii games offline and nothing else. Yeah, no, no Wii Shop channel for you. All the channels yeah. on the home menu, fucking useless. I mean, to be fair, this was literally the year before they closed the online down, so it wouldn't have made yeah. much sense for them to have it. But still, it's like they literally just sold an offline-only Wii model that was a box that had all of its features just stripped down to the bare minimum. Really did not help with Wii U sales. No. Almost the perfect system for me. <laughs> Not really. Um, no, it's like I was saying earlier. It, it just buy an original model. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think there's like a laser. Like, is there? Did they change the laser in the second model? I, I have no fucking clue. I don't know. I know that the Wii Mini does have, like, the tray. It's, like, it's not like a, you know, it's not like a slotted in and it, like, feeds it in sort of thing. So there's a possibility that there's a difference. Um, but still, like, what's the point? Like, because I do know that the Wii, like, Mini, you actually, like, open it up. It's like a CD player, like, opening up sort of thing. It, that's literally what it looks like. It's just a... a clunky CD player. It really is. Uh, Wikipedia does not say anything about there being a different uh, laser in it. That's funny. So, so there you go. Straight, the, up, straight the, up downgrade. The only thing that could have I made it better where... is if they had an improved disc laser in there just mm -hmm. to read the dual laser discs. Yeah. yeah. Like um, I'm going to talk at you guys about our social media stuff for a couple minutes. So if anybody else wants I to get go up, pee. I got to go pee. Go ahead and do it. So uh, as usual, we had. Yeah, I know we that the screen went black. I did that on purpose. So we have a Patreon Gaming Stooges, patreon.com slash Gaming Stooges. If you'd like to pitch in just three dollars a month. You can vote on our uh, upcoming content when we do polls. We also do the usual, um, just like, you know, we, we, we have a lot of like updates there. If you pitch in $6 a month, there is a shout out and you get exclusive content. We've been doing tier lists for Pokemon recently. We did a Johto tier list and we're going to be trying to uh set something up in the future that landon had planned we're not sure if we're gonna get to it but we're we're, sp we're gonna try so i'm not sure when that's gonna be but that might be in there we do have a pokemon gen 3 tier list planned as well and of course we've got our shout out which goes to pixel vixen thank you again for all of your support and thank you everybody else over on patreon 
that's pitched in over the months. I was supposed to use the Patreon funds to renew like a year subscription of the RSS, but uh, RSS doesn't let us change to a yearly thing. So we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with the Patreon funds. We'll, we'll think of something. We're, we're, we're probably going to try and like cover some of it with the, uh, we're going to try and cover the, the RSS with it. But I mean, maybe, maybe we'll do something special with extra funds. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll think about it. Um, of course we've got our discord. You can see the, uh, link to join that server in all of our videos right now on Twitch. If you go to our uh, profile, it's going to be there. If you're watching this VOD on YouTube, it'll be in the description. And it's you can find our Discord link almost anywhere that we upload or stream. You're, it's free to join. Probably shouldn't be, but it is. And uh, we've got streams going on. I believe we just finished... Uh, I think we're, I, I think they're still doing Wind Waker. I'm not going to lie. I've, I've been, so I've been asleep because I have to get up early in the morning, but I'm pretty sure they're still doing Wind Waker. Uh, Landon's been doing Dragon Quest. So that's been going on if, uh, so if you're into Dragon Quest 2, He's got Dragon Quest 2 going on during the earlier parts of the day. And we, uh, there's still been doing, uh, Ace Attorney. That's still going on. So, yeah. Yeah. I, Wind Waker's got probably, like, two more streams. Okay. Maybe one more, honestly. Uh, it depends on how, like, if I don't drag my feet, I'll probably drag my feet. So probably two streams. It might be two, like, two-hour streams. We'll see. But yeah, that's, there's that. Um, hey, guess what? Hey, guess what? We have Tillamook product placement. I went, I mean, spoilers, but I went to Tillamook Creamery uh, very recently. And they have new product out that's available. Um, and it is whole milk mozzarella product. They have it shredded. And I think they have it in like the like the full brick. I got the snack size ones that I'm going to try out. That's badass. Yeah. Anything you had to share, Jack, while Landon opens that up? Uh, not, not okay. really. You, I you have enjoyed a, your bathroom trip. I have a Budweiser with oh, Cubs no. paraphernalia on it. Go oh. Cubs. They lost today, by the way. They got fucking killed. This is really good mozzarella. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I mean, they had, like, a just regular mozzarella. But this is really good. All right. So, we're going to jump back in. And the next generation... Let's start with the handhelds this time. Because the assist, those Isn't systems... is that what we started with last time? Yes, actually, yes, that is exactly what we did. <laughs> so, uh, there's there's one system that got a lot of revisions, and then there's one system that got one. So let's get the one out of the way. The PS Vita uh, had a revision that came out in 2014. So uh, I don't know a whole lot about the revised Vita model. I know that it does slim down the... Uh, the build a little bit i know that it because i remember it being a little bit different um i know that the screen is mm. different because one of them is uh i actually own one you own the the revised one i own the revision yeah okay. I, I that's the one i own yeah okay. um it is they're like very different systems i mean fundamentally they're the same they're both vitas and they both play vita games but the hardware is, like, super different uh, for them. Um, like, they use different chargers. Yeah. Uh, the original models had a... Prior, uh, like they, they used, like, a Sony-made one. And then yeah. um, the, the other one was just a regular... USB uh, micro USB. Port. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I think the only real things they shared besides the OS was the, the game library cartridge right? slot. Yeah, it was like the cartridge slot and then like the memory cards were the same. Yeah, of course the fucking memory cards were the same. And well, it better be. <laughs> the PSP Go didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's that. According, um, but like, according to a Reddit comment that was answering, it also had longer battery life, which I believe it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So part of that is because it used a different screen, like a. a yeah, I mean LCD versus better built screen. Yeah. <sighs> Large quotes. If I don't quote that, uh, then someone's gonna get mad at me on the internet because yeah, someone they went from an. OLED screen to to an an LCD LCD screen. And most people prefer OLED, but, I mean, that doesn't make it better all the time, necessarily. I'll say this. The the PSP... Or, PSP. uh, The Vita 2... The 2000. I don't don't know. Yeah, Yeah, 2000. Some people call it the Um, Slim, because it is the Slim. Yeah. Uh, I just called it the Vita, because it's the only one I owned. Um... The uh, the Slim Vita is a serviceable system if you want a Vita. That's that's that. I have um, no now the PSTV. It's a much better system. I would say there. I didn't. I didn't include it. I probably should because it de- it technically counts. But there was a PSTV where it's literally it strips everything down, so like you literally can't like do certain things with it, and it plugs into your TV. Uh, on that yeah. note, in reverse, another thing I didn't mention, the Sega Genesis did have the Sega Nomad, where you put your Genesis in a handheld and play stuff that way, so that was that was weird. True. I don't know what I don't know what it is with certain companies deciding to make their systems go backwards for like a version. It's weird. I don't know. Um but yeah, that's I, the Vita. It's literally just like the newer versions, just kind of like if you want a Vita, just just get that one. Yeah. But the I've t- never used the, I've never used anything but an original Vita because that's the model that I own. Oh, okay. Uh, so I have no, th- I have no thoughts. I do own a Vita. I... Some people might not know this, and sometimes I forget because because I never use it. But I do own a Vita. I own all the things that Jack doesn't own for the Vita line. True. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I have like um... six or seven Vita games, maybe. Yeah. Are I'll you... say this about the PSTV real quick. Um, they're actually pretty cool. Um, they were... What did they retail at? Because um, whatever they, that they was, were they were definitely... Like, I, they were cheap. Wasn't it $99? Like, it was, like, really cheap. Yeah. It's, like, they're pretty good systems. And for that dollar amount, like, it's pretty fun to just be able to, like, switch my memory cards between, you know, my actual Vita and my PSTV, because I did that quite a bit. Um, and it, you could pick up your, your saves and stuff pretty easy. Yeah, $99. Um, yeah. No, they're, they're pretty cool systems for, like, taking a portable system and putting it to, like, TV. Um, there was a little bit of hokiness because, like, some of the games that use touch, touch controls, I, uh, like... Some of them, like, were not compatible. Some of them were. So you ran into compatibility issues with some and, of the games with and, the PSTV. And even the games that didn't have that, like, some of them just, for whatever reason, just didn't have compatibility, like, full compatibility. Yeah. Some of, so, like, the PSTV, the main issue is that the compatibility. Like, you don't know what you can play on it unless you go deep dive and look at, like, what's compatible and, like, what isn't compatible. But, like, yeah, like you said, it is, it's neat otherwise. Yeah, I would say if it had full compatibility with all of the games, because there are some of the games that do have, like, because you can plug in a PS4 controller into it and use, like, that as a controller for it. Um, You would think that you'd just be able to use the touchpad on the PS4 controller as, like, the touch, like, you would think. Some of the, I think some of the games let you have that option. I think some of the games let you use uh, L3, R3. And then that causes um, a touch sensor to come up. Yeah. So for you to use. wasn't it like the whole compatibility thing? It was like up to the people that made the game to like make like to have like the some compa- sort of, Yeah. So like if they didn't do that, 
then you weren't getting compatibility with the PS TV. Like, Sony didn't just, like, try to make it so that there was, like, blanket compatibility, which they should have, but they didn't. Yeah. Uh, oh. Pixel in our chat says, Switch before Switch? Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. You had to own I mean, two separate pieces of hardware. I was going to say, let. I mean, there's a mul- there's multiple different instances where we could say that, right? The Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo, the Sega Nomad, yeah. the PS TV. It's been uh, tried multiple the times game, before. The Game Boy Player game for Boy the Player? GameCube. Yep. yep. So, yeah. like, there was, there was a bunch of different attempts at this sort of thing. You guys want to talk about the 3DS for a little while? Yes. Um, I mean, yes, but also I just want to talk about the 3DS for a whole episode, so I don't know. We will that talk is also about true. Yeah. We will talk about the 3DS on its own episode because we love it so much, but it is worth mentioning that the 3DS after the original model had five other revisions. You had the, the 3DS DS or the 3DS family is massive. Yes. It's yeah. stupid. It's insane. The th- the 3DS XL came out the year after the 3DS, so obviously they were doing the whole XL thing again, like the uh, 2D, like the DSi XL was. The 2DS came out in 2013, pretty much just to answer. So, like I mentioned this earlier, in like the Game Boy Micro, I feel was um, was like answering a question that wasn't asked at the time, but is kind of genius for answering it now. The 2DS is, like, in reverse. Like, the 2DS was answering a legitimate question at the time because there were parents that were not going to buy their kid a 3DS because they didn't want the 3D to hurt their eyes. So, what did they do? They got a cheapo version of the 3DS with no 3D and released it just in time for the new Pokemon game. And it was $80. And it worked. It sold a bunch of 3DSs. So, like, it did its job. Now, that said, uh, based on our descriptions, I do think that the 2DS has better build quality than the PSP Go, at least. Like, it's got oh, a weird yeah, form 100%. factor. But it's got a good build quality for that weird form factor, I think. The, the form factor is extremely weird. It's like... Playing it is weird because the, both of the screens are, like, perfectly right level with each other. So it's, like, you know, most, like, clamshell design Nintendo handhelds, you know, you play it with, like, the top screen, like, slightly at an angle so that you get right. a good view of both screens. The 2DS is, like, if you just bent it all the way back and just played it like this the yeah. whole time. And it's, like, kind of weird because it makes the top screen look further away. Yeah. If, no, if I agree. If that makes any that sense. Makes, that does make sense. Uh, I, have, I have played on a 2DS before. My friend had one uh, back in 2013. Uh, but it's it's good as a, like, you know, a budget version of the 3DS. Because, you know, the 3DS wasn't exactly a cheap handheld at the time. Um, so it makes sense. It's not the best revision i've ever seen but there are worse ones like i said i think it does its job it does what it was intended to do which was get kids whose parents weren't going to get them the 3ds before to get them a 3ds so mm-hmm. it, it did its job and i i have a I, 2ds i think it's comfortable enough it is weird but like surprisingly it feels fine in the hands so like i like it I had one for a little bit. Um, I needed something in between having a uh, because one of my one of my original like I my original model broke at one point and like I was waiting for one of the better versions to come out like the one of the new 3ds original models and so I needed like a stopgap system for like a year or so. So it was like between that and like um oh, an I think actual I remember 3DS this. XL. I think I, I tried a 2DS for a little bit and like I ended up returning it and buying a new not not a new 3DS XL but a 
new condition 3ds xl yeah i i remember that actually i remember when yeah. you briefly owned a 2ds and i don't know it just i think to me it felt weird yeah i kept trying to my hands would rest um on the back where a 3ds's uh, triggers would be yeah instead of like resting on the top where the triggers are on a 2ds mm -hmm. oh yeah so it, you wouldn't it, even it have your shaped. fingers on it it is shaped weird because it has the l and r on the very very top and it's yep. not and it's not like the game boy advance where like the l and r or like a psp even or a ps vita where like the l and r are like kind of level with the screen like the screen because keep in mind the 2DS does have every other feature besides the 3D, including the front-facing camera, which takes up a chunk of the top. So you've got this huge chunk up top, then the L and R on top, and then underneath that chunk where the camera is, there's the screen. So it's weird. It is weird. Um, yeah. Lennon, what's your thoughts? Overall... On... Oh, sorry. Yeah, overall, it's fine. I just... I guess my, like, I just got used to the clamshell or, like, because of just how, where the screen placement is, I just felt like it should have been, like, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I was just like, I can't, I can't make myself learn this. So, yeah. get rid of this. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, there was the two new, go ahead. We, we didn't really talk about the 3DS XL very much. Not a whole lot, but I mean, you can go ahead. I'm, I, I'll be right back, actually, because I want to go grab something. Okay. Uh, it's good. Um, it's fine. It it serves its purpose. I think like it. It's there's a lot of like minor issues that like the the original 3ds had that I think this kind of like fixes a little bit, but also it doesn't really change a whole whole lot. Um, the. Honestly, the biggest thing that I like more about this one is the stylus placement, because the stylus placement on the original 3DS is kind of poopy. Like, this, on this one, it's just right where your hand is. There you go. Now, if you're left-handed, you're kind of fucked, but, you know, it'd be like that. I mean, the base DS has the same thing, where, like, the stylus is on the top, too, so... Like... Yeah. I... Hot take, I really like the 3 ds the base 3DS's stylus probably more than any other stylus because of that like like telescoping thing with it. It is a very high quality stylus. Super good. Um I my biggest complaint about most of the consoles for the 3DS it comes down to pixel density because they don't really like, the image gets really stretched when you go to, like, the XL consoles. Yeah. And it's very noticeable. It's not as noticeable on the 3DS XL, but when you go to the new 3DS XL, it's very noticeable. But, uh... Yeah, it's just, it's just something that, like, the image gets really distorted on some games because they weren't it, made for that screen size. Is it something to do with, like, the, uh... Just the resolute? I mean, like, what... Because I'm pretty sure the three, the new 3DS uh, XL and the regular 3DS XL, the screen size is exactly the same. It might be a resolution thing. It's just, I don't... When it comes to, like, them being, like, on, like, the pixel densities of the XLs versus the... Uh, the smaller systems uh, just like it's pretty distorted. I was gonna say so even if something has the same size, the PPI or pixels per inch can still be different between the two. So I mean, it maybe there's a PPI difference. Uh, let me just mention the next couple models since we are already starting to talk about that. Uh, in 2015, we had the new 3DS XL, and then there was also the new 3DS, just new 3DS base. That, so it, the weird thing about that one is that we never got what was a full official hard launch of the system. They sent out a lot of different like waves of 3D, of new 3DSs. So it came out a little after the new 3DS XL. They started it in like, 
I think like late 2015, early 2016. And we got a bunch of different like variants of the new 3DS, but like they didn't hard launch it. So like it doesn't have really an official release out here. But yeah. those are the those are the next ones that came out. And uh after that, I'll just throw it in there. Uh in 2017, same year as the Switch, after the Switch came out, we got the new 2DS XL. That is very confusing because there wasn't an actual 2DS XL to begin with. But uh, those are the new family. So you had three different models of the new family. The 2DS XL obviously doesn't have 3D and does have a different design because it came out a little after. The new 3DS XL is pretty much just the new 3DS or the 3DS XL, but with revamped specs. Um, the new 3DS models also added a special nub because some games were using a special circle pad accessory that added a second pad on the right hand side. And the new 3DS has also added extra ZL and ZR buttons. You don't really use them all that much, but they, they have some games that use them. And um, they changed a few other little things here and there, but overall it's the same console with a small spec bump to make it run better. Uh, I have the, my favorite, this this is probably my favorite revision, like, ever. If I'm not, like, like, yet, the Game Boy Advance SP is probably my favorite from a nostalgia standpoint, but as, like, my daily driver model to play the games on the system, I love the new 3DS so much. Like, it is, it, it is such a great form factor, it feels really good in the hands, it's got a really premium quality feel to it. It the I like the regular one over the 3DS XL because of the face plates that you can swap out. Like you just take them off and just like change them into something else if you want. Uh, I'm okay. I'm not gonna change that right now. But um, <laughs> you have a uh, face plates that you can swap on the th base 3DS model. The um, I like the fact that the new 3DS's buttons are actually the colors of the Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom uh, buttons. The 3DS, the new 3DS XL does that, but with just like the letter, not the actual like pull button. But there it I is. Mean, the new, th the new 3D. Oh, and also the new 3DS's, both the XL and the base model, have better 3D uh, face tracking to try to line up you they call it super stable 3d quote unquote uh not that super stable but much better than the regular models yeah. oh my god like i've used the 3d on both and like i can't go back to the original models for if i'm playing with the 3d on it just it is not happening mm -hmm. I, I found uh the ppis for each of the 3DS, not the 2DS models, but the 3DS models. Uh, the original model had 132 and fi uh, 0. 0.15, so 132.15 uh, PPI. The new 3DS had 120.23 PPI, and then both of the XL models have the same PPI, which is 95.59. Okay. Mm. So yeah, it was, um, that makes sense because the new 3DS base model, it's hard to tell, but it does have a slightly larger screen than the base 3DS. Um, yes. And obviously um, the XLs are, they're chonky. They have a big screen, so lower PPI. And then most of this Reddit post that I found it on was just people saying that people are just trying to compensate for not being able to afford an XL. And... <laughs> Yeah, what? you won't notice it when you're actually playing, and yet I notice it. When I, I do play. Like I would and say, it's not that I can't own. I have four different 3DS consoles. So my thing is like I have played on an XL and on a regular 3DS. I, I think we'll talk more about this on like the actual 3DS episode. But I just prefer the base model because, like you said, the 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 image quality is just better. And also, I found myself not liking the XL models are just not portable. Like, I can't fit those in a pocket yeah. and take them with me. I can... Here, it's, it's a little tough to do it with the base model, but I can do it. 
here's with the XL. Here, here's my case for the XL model. I'm I'm a very large human being. Yes, I have yours. gigantic hands. These fit my hands better than the regular model 3DSs do. I understand the downgrade in the PPI on the top screen, but the comfort when playing... I've used this particular 3DS so fucking much. It's so comfy in my hands. Like, yeah, the, you know, changing the face plates is really cool, and part of me does wish I had an original... Or not an original, but a base regular size a new, new 3DS. 3DS. But, I mean, I'm happy with this. So Spe- speak your truth. You, Just say you don't care about PPI. It's fine. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Have I'm you really used a new 3ds? Nope. Not XL. Okay. Not that I'm invalidating your uh, your comment, but I just want to. I mean, I I that. never. I've never had the opportunity to buy one. Honestly. No. I don't know. Maybe they, I would use like it if Cloud I. Like said. Maybe I would use they, it if they, I bought one, but like I'm I I like this one so. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, now, when you're saying original model cloud, are you talking about just the, a new 3ds, or are you talking about original model 3ds? When you I kept said showing what? the, because you said new, a, you, new 3ds, that. new 3ds. Okay. I because you I've said so- original, and I just wanted yeah. to make sure. So, base new 3ds. This is my favorite 3ds model. This is like my daily okay. driver. This is how I play 3DS and a lot of DS games too, to be honest. it's I mean, it's not as quite as good a quality visual for DS games as the DSi, but I mean, it gets the job done, so. I am in the same boat as uh, Cloud. My, my, the system I use more often than not is a new 3DS system. Um, I just own all of these other ones for funsies. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm looking at prices online for a uh, regular-sized new 3DS, and uh, no thank you. They're, 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 they're kind of expensive. I mean, the new 3DS XLs are also starting to get up there, too, but not quite to the extent of the base yeah. 3DS. I mean, I mean, like as cool as it would be to own one of those just because of the changing faceplates, I already have three other 3DS models. I can't yeah. justify getting one. I mean... To be fair, this new 3DS that I got, I bought this back in 20, like right around when it came out. It originally had like the white Mario plates on them. So whenever that came out, that was like 2016. And I think that was the second release of them because there was the, uh, in America. Yeah. The, I believe the first release was the Happy Home Designer release. Yeah, because that came with Happy Home Designer. Because I I purchased one of those right away. Yeah, so I bought this, uh, and this is the exact same 3DS that I've had for eight years. So like, I've had no issues. Uh, there was a small point where like the prongs where the carts go in, it was having a little bit of issue where like it was feeding it wrong, uh, but it, I fixed it. So like, it's been fine since. I. I love this thing. Like I've, it's it's still trucking eight years later. So like, I'm hoping it'll last me eight more years. Yeah, the one I have is probably because I I had to switch my new 3ds out at one point uh, because the one I had stopped reading the SD card slot Ooh. completely. Yeah, it was. I got a 3ds yeah, XL bad. that has like an issue with the SD card slot. Like it works, but if you nudge the system wrong, it just it's like, oh, as, what happened to the SD card? I don't know where it is. Yeah, and after it started having those SD card slot issues, it started having power issues. Where if I opened it, uh, it would just like make a pop sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it shut off. So oh, I had to, I replaced it, but the the replacement I ha- I have is just like I said about six years old now, maybe even older. Um, still works. They're uh, they're fantastic systems. Yeah. Um, Before we move at on, at the time of release, oh. they were they were a budget system because uh, they were a Black they, Friday system. I was gonna say which they, was really nice, but yeah, they did. Um, 
They did release the new 3DS and the new 3DS XLs at the same price point as the original ones. The originals yeah. were the original 3DS and 3DS XL were 179 and 199, and that's literally what, or 169 and 199, and that's literally just oh well. The new 3DS was like a ten dollars more, I believe. I think it was 179 instead of 169, but the new 3DS XL was the same price. It was 199, so like just basically replaced it. Um, before we move on to our last section, because we're going to talk plenty about the 3DS in its own episode, probably th- later this season, to be honest. Um, did you guys have any experience with the new 2DS XL? No. Um, I don't own one, but I've, I've used it uh, in bits and pieces. So I, I own, would say, yeah, I own one. I've used it for a long time before I switched back to using my new 3DS as my daily driver. It's fine. Of the XL models, it's the least comfortable. I will say that. The build quality, it's it's a little cheap. It gets the job done. The screen quality's good. Uh, the it fit. It's small enough, compact enough because they like slimmed it down that you could kind of fit it in your pocket a lot better than like a 3DS XL. But the a, the ABC, the, or not ABC, ABXY buttons, they feel kind of cheap and they have like this weird indentation for the actual letter. So it can kind of be a little uncomfortable. Uh, same thing with the directionals. They have like little lines, they're indentations instead of just marked. So like the control, the, the it just... It feels a little uncomfortable to hold for a longer period, but it's otherwise fine. Like it, it does its job. I like that it has a flap that covers the SD card and the uh, game cart slot because it protects those. And also the SD card slot is actually in the most convenient spot on like it uh, next to the the base it uh, out of the th- out of the new models it's like probably one of the easiest to get to cuz with the 3DS XL and the new 3DS you have to unscrew the back to like get to the SD card slot you don't have to do that with the 2DS XL but it's it's not that great though like i've used it for a long time and like it was fine cuz it was a budget option you could get it for $99 and it came with Mario Kart. So, that's not bad. Yeah. I feel like if there was one of the new 2DS XLs I would have purchased, thinking about the color options, the creamsicle one. Oh, the, the, one came to the first. orange white. I kind of yeah. wish that I did do that one because another issue with the new 2DS XL models is that. They are very smudge prone. They get fingerprints very, like, it's horrible. And I got the black and blue one. And I, the top part is fine. The top part has like a glossy finish on it that like doesn't really grab like fingerprints. But the bottom half is matte and it really absorbs like any dirt and grime that's on your fingers. And it's, it's just not a good feeling. It's not a good look. And I think that they'd probably look a little bit better because, like, fingerprints are a lot harder to see on, like, the white versions of their systems that are, like, matte finish like that. So, like, I think the creamsicle one probably would have been better. But let's move on. We'll talk about the 3DS more some other time. The home consoles for this past generation, uh, there was the PS4 slim and the ps4 pro in 2016 there's they kind of released them i think they released like about the same time they had a new design that was like more rounded matte finish as opposed to the old like sharp uh half glossy half like hard plastic matte finish of the uh base ps4 model uh i don't have any experience with ps4 with the PS4 revisions. Like, at all. I got a big old chonky fat base model. That's it. I have a base model. Uh, Bethany has a... 
the the fat one, the Big Mac. Oh, the pro. The pro. I I call it the Big Mac because it's Big Mac. It, it, looks, it, it looks like a Big Mac. It really yeah. does. Um, it's a triple decker. I've never used the uh, I've never used the Slim. And from what I've seen of the PS4 Pro, it's barely different <laughs> from the original. The biggest thing. Um, between like the models like the build qualities are fine across the board for all three models of a PS4 the biggest thing you're going to run into is uh, the I feel like the original model is more convenient for uh, like switching the hard drive out because it has the removable cover yeah um, whereas the other ones you have to like I don't know you have to do some some more stuff to it. I did not right know there. this. I have oh, not the, the, touched my. I did not. I've not touched my PS4 in that way ever, and I've owned it for like ten years almost. Yeah. So the for the original models that the smaller section, uh, either it's a it. gloss or a matte finish, um, on that, um, depending on like how newer of the original model you have, uh, is removable cover. So. Two things, that's right where the hard drive sits, so it's easy to remove, but then also it's super easy to clean. Because you can just clean know. out that area from all dust and everything. I should probably look into that because mine probably has a lot of shit in there because I haven't yeah. cleaned it once. It's very easy to take off and very easy to put back on. Like, it's just a like a slip cover uh, that like has like very easy... Um, uh, plastic locks that it just slides in and out of. Um, oh. Super nice. Um, I have it right here. Yeah, so it's you always... have one of the older ones because it has the gloss. Um, they had ones that had that gloss was actually a matte finish too. You can just yeah. pop that off. You can just slide it. Um, Which way do I slide it? Uh, slide it uh, so it, when it's facing down you just slide it away from the system. So oh, okay. Uh, up top, you want it facing the 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 gloss should be facing you, okay. and then just I guess just oh. slide it away from the system. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yo! I did this for the first time ever. I've yeah, I've never yeah. Done, I've never done that before either. I mean, That's I knew you could so... do that, but I've never done it. I've never done Hi. this before. I, Th thank I, you. I work with thank consoles. You. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, That's so, cool. so yeah, I would say that that is a nice feature of that. They removed that from the other consoles, um, and that's part of part of that is ventilation. That's like the one of the bigger things that the Slim has over the original model is it has reworked vent vent systems, um, and then the Pro has 4K. And that's yeah. that's it. So, okay. I mean, it just kind of depends on how much money you want to spend <laughs> when it comes to these. Uh, yeah. Now, Do you guys have any... Uh... So, the reason why I don't have any experience with anything other than this base model is because I bought this used for the launch of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 that fall... And then they came out with the Slim and Pro, like, the next month after. So that was really cool. I have a very early model uh, PS4. It wasn't, like, the launch year. I think it was the year after. I think I got it in 2014. And the PS3, the, sorry, the PS4 launched in 2013, right? Uh, yeah, right? late 2013. Okay, so I got mine the following year. Because it was the Grand Theft Auto V uh, Last of Us Remastered bundle. Where you got a physical copy of Golf Tournament Adventures and a digital copy of The Last of Us Remastered. They should have flipped oh. that. And then I could have just torn the code in half for uh, Grand Theft Auto, but oh well. Um, and like, I haven't needed another... I didn't need another PS... Like another PlayStation until I got my PS5. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
the but Xbox. I've dealt with all three systems a lot, so that's, that's yeah. why. I, yeah, because, I mean, you've been working through that whole generation, so, like, you're going to have people yeah. bringing that shit in all the time. PS, I mean, the, the previous gen and that gen, like, were the two gens that I... I've dealt with a lot of the hardware. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Xbox One had a couple different revisions, namely uh, a few years after, in the same year as the PS4 Slim, we got the Xbox One S, which is basically just like the same as like the Xbox 360 S. It was a revised version of the Xbox One. And then the year after, we got the Xbox One X. Yeah. And there was also a, an Xbox uh, One S was released in a couple different configurations because it was like there was Xbox One S and then there was an Xbox One S like digital only version. So, yep. yeah, it was. There, there's probably other configurations too because it is Xbox, but like those are like the major ones. Mm, and no, those that's pretty much it. Um, as my, far as like, yeah, the big stuff. I. So I didn't really play a whole lot of Xbox One, not even with friends. So I think like the most experience I have is I think I've played a little bit of Xbox One S when I briefly owned one. And I had a friend who owns, I have a friend who owned, I don't know if she still does, um, the like launch model. Like, she was really proud that she, like, got it, like, on launch day. She still, she has, like, the controller that has, like, the, you know, day one edition or whatever that, that, that they had on it. But, uh, I didn't play, I didn't play a whole lot of Xbox One, so, like, I don't have any real experience with any of this. And I've never touched an Xbox One X in my life. I've Jack. no experience at all. I've like barely played on an original model Xbox One, but I've never played the revisions and I don't fucking care. Perfect. I'm gonna come from this from a perspective of having to clean the systems. Perfect. We have something to talk the about. The original Yeah, the original model sucks ass. Those slap vents fucking collect dust like no other. Oh my god, I hate them. The original model sucks so much ass. The S sucks ass. Those circle dot vents collect so much fucking dust and are a pain to clean out. Oh my god. The X is fine. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's the fucking... The top, they put these dumb, stupid vents on those two models, and they, they're just a fucking pain in the fucking ass to, like, deal with. And, like, they're so... It's, like, they're just dust magnets. They just... Like, cling dust or junk or people, like, do stupid shit if they use smoke and you have an Xbox One S, because most of them are white, they just collect that gunk in those, like, little pores and it's a fucking pain in the goddamn ass to deal with. I hate them. The X doesn't really have that. They just have the side vents. The whole top is matte. It's perfect. Perfect design. Thank you very much. You can move on now. Um, the next couple things we're going to talk about are the Nintendo Switch's revisions. Um, there's technically three, but there's really two major ones. So the first one, uh, the first major one was the Switch Lite in 2019. There was also a Switch V2 they didn't really advertise it as anything besides just the Nintendo Switch. It was just replacing the older one. And the major difference with that one was just better battery life. Like, they just, they upped the battery life. They replaced the old one with the new one. Um, it was, what caused that is they switched out the screen, actually. Yeah. Um, it uses a different screen, um, which gives it, which is able to let it save the battery. Yeah. Um... Yeah. And and then the uh, most recent revision, which was just a couple years back, was the Nintendo Switch OLED model, OLED, uh, that came out in 2021. So, uh, experience with the Nintendo Switch revisions. I've, I've owned uh, three of the four. I've, I owned a version one, version two, and an OLED. I've dealt with the lights, and I, I mean, the, the light doesn't do anything for me. It's... It removes the thing about the Switch that I 
I care about, which yeah. is like, the option. Yeah, I mean to play TV versus it's so it's weird. I think that the Nintendo Switch Lite, in the same manner as the 2DS, does the job that it's intended to do, and that's be a cheaper alternative. Oh yeah, but I like, agree with that. But like, it's just not what I need. Yeah, like yeah. most people must much like the 2DS. Most people are not going to care. It's just to get into like that extra little marginalized market to get like them on board so that they can get to as wide an audience as possible. And that's fine, but none of us care about it. I have used a Nintendo Switch Lite before. I think they're extremely comfortable. I think they have a very good form factor. I love the directional pad on them. That said, I'm not gonna go out of my way to buy one because I I have a Switch. I have a Switch OLED. Because I've used, like Landon, I owned the launch model. I upgraded to a V2 when that came out because I wanted the better battery life. And then I upgraded to the OLED. And I've been using that. I I don't need a light. I am in the same boat. I have never, I've never touched a light. Um, I, like Landon said, not for me. Um, Like removing the option just feels like limiting myself for no reason. Um, and I say this as someone who primarily plays in handheld mode. But you like to have <laughs> the option. Yeah. Oh, I, I love having the option because yeah. it's easy for streaming. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is to be able to just put it in the, the fucking dock. Yeah. But like, you can't I, you can't stream uh, Switch yeah. Switch Mini or Switch Lite. Not uh, Switch Lite. My bad. But uh, yeah, it's just having the option is just what I like. I have only had I've I never had the version two, uh, for the Switch. I went straight from version one, which was a launch model, to my OLED, which I got. Oh yeah, you didn't get an Animal Crossing, did you? Nope. Uh, yeah. I went I I stuck with the same Switch model until I got this, um, which I mostly got because I don't have this. I don't have the Splatoon Joy-Cons on it right now, but uh, when they released this, it was the fucking Splatoon uh, 3 version. And I'm like, you know what? I've been meaning to... Because I remember when we were... Uh, when we were at the coast... Or not the coast... Was it not the coast? Uh, we were at uh, Seaside. And we were like, mm-hmm. just kind of well, like... Uh, Seaside's on the coast. Okay, yeah, well... Um, yeah. We were just kind of like playing on the Switch. We were playing like clubhouse games or whatever. And I just noticed like how quickly my battery was draining on my version, my Model 1 Switch. And I'm like, damn, I need to fucking get a new one. And then like this came out a few months later and I'm like, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll upgrade now. And like it's Switch OLED is nice. I mean, like it. I think if my original model Switch, like, still had a decent battery life, I probably would have just stuck with it, but, um, it's nice to have a much better battery life than I did previously. And also, the uh, kickstand is a thousand times better. I wanted, I was, I wanted to get into that, so, like, the weird thing about the Switch OLED is a lot of people were, like, upsetty spaghetti, because it's like, oh, it's not the Switch Pro, it's not the Switch Pro, like, people wanted the Switch Pro. But like, I what know because exactly I change. The, the, I I I think that Nintendo they I remember I think they had intention to make a Switch Pro, but because of the uh, issues with like supplies and stuff, because this this remember Nintendo Switch OLED came out during the pandemic, like it. So I don't think that they had the. I think that there was an intention to make a Pro model, but they couldn't really quite get there. But like I, the thing about the OLED that's funny is that Nintendo advertised the Switch OLED with only a few of the differences that it actually has because I was not expecting the more premium build quality because there's like there's like some metal that they use to like reinforce the system that is not there on the original models like it's more pla- hard plastic so I was very surprised when I got an OLED and I was like this is heavier like there's there's material in here that's not there before. Uh, yeah. You mentioned the kickstand; uh, it folds out all the way across instead of just on that little bit. That's also really cool. Um, the dock 
for the OLED has a uh, has a LAN adapter has the um that port Ethernet Ethernet it's not on the original model so you get that in there as well so there's like a f and of course there's also uh, additional um, storage you start with 64 gigabytes instead of 32 which not a lot but I mean it's an upgrade still so like they made a decent amount of improvements to be worth that $50 extra. They just didn't really tell most people about them. They were just like, here's an OLED screen, and the kickstand's cool. Go it's, buy it. I think it's harder to, like, do a marketing sizzle reel yeah. for all of the improvements that the OLED has over the other Switch models. Yeah, because most of them aren't marketable differences. But I'll say this, when I talk to people about it, when they go, okay, what's the difference? And I, I go through basically the same list that you just went, and I go into the dirty details, if they actually really care, they go, oh, that oh. Sounds, yeah, that sounds okay. good, right? Yeah. It's like, why, why is this one worth, why is this one $50 more? And it's like, well, actually, there's quite a bit of a difference yeah. between between them like if you sat the, someone down to explain the differences they would see that oh it is worth fifty dollars more holy crap i think the biggest thing is if you like take a uh regular model switch either version one or sw version two doesn't matter and an oled and like turn them on and all they do is load up the nintendo logo you can already there see like how much of a difference uh like Screen, the screens are, but then also, like, you can just hold them and feel, like you said, like, how much of a difference the build qualities have. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, uh, like, I love my Switch OLED. I, I think it's an incredible product. There are a few more final, uh, I don't have dates for these because I forgot to add these into my list but i was like oh shit i kind of we kind of have to talk about them but the xbox series s did get like an additional model out and i don't know what other differences it has besides extra storage you get a uh, you get are you a, talking about the one terabyte version yeah is uh, there, is there a difference it's black that's it it's black <laughs> and it has one terabyte there you, there you go yeah. <laughs> you know the differences and then the ps5 recently got it's PS5 Slim, quote unquote. And that one like, was a November. Yeah, it was a November release. It, it just, didn't have a hard release date. Yeah, but it was a November release. Yeah, uh, so like it came out around the same time as Call of Duty Modern Warfare Three re yeah. uh, remake. They rotated out the old PS5 stock to get this new PS5 in, and it is noticeably smaller. But the main reason they did it was because. Rather than sell you a PS5 or PS5 digital, which the digital versions did not sell well at all, they and have different materials for each one, they could just use the same thing and then swap out the disc tray or in the disc tray, depending on which one they're selling you. And there you go. And they can sell you the disc tray for a premium. Yep. So if you want to buy the digital... Because you're like, oh, I want to save money. And then you're an idiot and you realize, oh shit, I want the disc tray. Now you can pay extra for it. Yeah, so. I love it. Uh, have you opened up a P one of the new PS5 models? Is it any easier, more difficult than the original? Um, As far as like removing the plates, it's actually about the same uh, ease of like removing the plates. It's just there's four... It's four segmented instead of two segmented. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, there's like the weird. Yeah, I saw like the slits along the sides, so it's like. It's I actually had to figure out the uh, manual disc eject on a, a slim uh, for a customer. That was fun. Oh. <laughs> um, you only have to remove the the one where the tray is. Um, I think, if I remember right, it, it, it was a like a two months ago or something. And I had to do it the one time, but, uh, the slim is fine. It's fine. It, I mean, it's a little smaller. It's a little cleaner, um, of a system, but 
I'm not going to. Yeah. Much like if you own a uh, regular Switch and you are happy with it, you don't need an OLED. Same thing with the PS5. If you have a PS5, you don't need to run out and get the new model. Like you're, it's I would say there's more of a reason to upgrade from an original Switch to an OLED versus an original PS5 to a Slim. Yeah. Same as like PS4 original to PS4 Slim. It's just slightly more compact. And that's it. Yeah. All right, so uh, that is all of the uh, different revisions we wanted to talk about. But I do have a few questions. We kind of went over what our first ones were, right? I know Jack mentioned uh, your first one was... What What again was your first one? My first revision? Yeah, the first like, oh. revision console revision that you used. This one. Yep, so you had, yeah, you had SP. I Save. mentioned... The, uh, the yes. SP. Yes. Yeah. Save for, for, for the audio view. Sorry. Listeners. The Game Boy Advance SP from the Game Boy Advance family of systems. Um, I believe mine is probably the new style SNES, like I mentioned, I think. Um, but if it wasn't that, it was definitely the Game Boy Color if we're counting that. Um, that's It's definitely that. Uh, Landon, I don't remember if you answered this one or not. You might have. I just don't remember. Um, as far as, like, one where I... Like, you actually owned had, it or used it a lot. Yeah, where I had experience with both versions, it's, um, Game Boy Color, if we're counting that. Um, if it's just, like, one where I actually, I actually upgraded system to system. Oh, I was uh, just going it, with, like, the first one I had, even if it was, like, the only one that I had. Like, yeah, in the, in the case but, of... but th- in that case, it is... Uh, yeah, it's Game Boy Color if we're counting that. If not, Game Boy Advance SP. Um, if we're not counting that, but like one where I had an original model and upgraded, it would be the 3DS. That is a, that is a good uh, question to springboard off of. I would probably say that the PS1, quote unquote, was like the first one. Because, I mean, I had enough experience. It was literally the family PlayStation. And then I yeah, got PS1. So like, yeah, yeah that, that was my first one. Uh, Jack, did Jack you... said his was the same yeah. because he said he had a Game Boy Advance and then he upgraded to a Game Boy Advance SP. I was listening. Uh, what Thank would you. you say are your favorite revisions? Uh, you can say one, you can say up to three if like you're not really like sure exactly. I think probably the single best one almost objectively is the 360S. Just because, like, it fixes what was otherwise a broken system. Um, but aside from that, I... <sighs> That's a good question. PS3 Slim is really good, too. Uh, if, if nothing else, but for saving the PS3. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and... Probably the SP. I mean, like, I, I I think the SP, like, just for what it brought to the table was, like, a huge deal. And, uh, y- yeah. Uh, so my top three, I don't know if this is in a particular order. I'll just go in the release order. Uh, definitely the SP, Game Boy Advance SP, is just, like, I... It's a, it really is a game changer. Just the small dip, like the the major, the the few but major changes that the SP had. Like, I I love it. Um, the PS3 Slim again. The PS3 Slim was the PS3 I bought and owned myself. I had plenty of experience with the PlayStation 3 before, but I love the PS3 Slim. It it does its job. It works well. Like. I don't feel any sort of like regret not having the little features that it doesn't have. Like totally perfect system. And then the new 3DS is definitely the last of the three. Cause like this, it's just my baby. Like I just love the, the new 3DS, just everything about it. The new, the 3DS is already one of the greatest systems when it comes to personalization and customizability. And the new 3DS just takes it to a whole nother level while just being a really premium product. So, like, yeah, that's my top three. Um, 
My answer was, I think, going to be originally pretty much what Jack said, but I don't own... Well, I didn't own two of those. Uh, the PS3 Slim or the 360S, so I don't really care about those, I guess. Um, uh, new 3DS, is, for sure. Game Boy Advance SP. Um, I'll probably go 3, 360 Slim, though. Um, as, as the third slot. Uh, just because it is, like, just that much better of a console. Um, but the Switch OLED is uh, a pretty pretty nice upgrade for Switch as well. Okay. Uh, preferably of ones that you have enough experience with, what would you say is your least favorite? What is one that you just didn't care of for? Of the ones that I've had experience with... Preferably speaking, yeah. Yeah, um, hmm. Because, I mean, we could all just we could all just spend all day shitting on the Wii Mini and the PSP Go, but that's not we, fun. We really could. Um, We really should. <laughs> we should. <laughs> I don't know, because that's, that's kind of tough, because, like, usually when it comes to console revisions, I like to do my research before I, like, yeah. jump the gun and buy a new version of a system. I mean, back in the day, you know, I was a stupid kid, and I would just buy whatever. I mean, I guess out of all the ones that I have experience with, probably the DS Lite. Just because it doesn't really, aside from being, like, more compact, it doesn't really bring anything new to the table. And it's a much more fragile and cheap-feeling system than the I original. I mean, to be fair, the, the DS does have notable improvements. Like, I, the battery life is a little better, the screens are better, but, like, does that matter if the build quality sucks? The, like, and the build it, quality is really bad. It does like that. Like looking back, it's 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 amazing. There's like so they they sold so many probably because they broke. Like I'm amazed that this one still functions, but like the D pad is not what it used to be. Like the I've mentioned this in the DS podcast. I'm fairly certain, but my the right button on the D pad ruined by Sonic Rush and Sonic Rush Adventure, by the way. Uh, just, I have to press it, like, pretty hard in order for it to, like, register as a button press. Um, but, and I know we brought this up on the DS podcast, but definitely part of the reason why this model sold so well was because it kept fucking breaking. Yeah, my, uh, my least favorite of the ones I have experience with is probably also the DS Lite, just because, like everything you said um but i do also i did have enough experience that i can also say that i am not a fan of the ps3 super slim why just why nobody needed this i don't like this thing but i mean the ds light is definitely like that I, I don't know man like it's over time it just looks worse and worse to me yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll say the PS3 Super Slim out of, and like, it's hard for me to say just because I don't own a lot of these, but I've dealt with so many of them. Mm -hmm. So from, from the, customer's... I was going to say, from the perspective of someone who had to clean and work with all of these products, which is the one and that's like customer service. Yeah. What is the most uh, frustrating to deal with for you? It's definitely like. I would say it's a tie between the uh, the PS3 Super Slim and the uh, Xbox One uh, S. Uh, those are probably like the two like revisions that I'm just like, yeah, they bring like some of them bring some stuff to the table, but they're just they're just not great build qualities. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then did you have like a personal least favorite you want to throw in? Or just, mm. or, or, or is it pretty much just based on like having to deal with them? Out of like ones that I've actually owned or like used quite a bit, I guess maybe the 2DS and not even because it's a bad console. It's just like the one like revision that I was like, I 
It just didn't. It didn't line up with you. It just didn't. Yeah, click. it just. This doesn't work for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and then last question: If you could go back and give any system a revision, is there one that you would gravitate towards giving a revision to? And what would you do with it? What would you change? What would you add? I haven't thought about this question enough uh, so far, or like up to this point. Um, I was thinking about it earlier. I was thinking, I was trying to think of like systems that had revi- or that didn't have revisions, excuse me. And I thought, well, like, I thought like. You can like, go with either or. And, and I thought like, I've well, there's one. the GameCube, but like, what would I change about the GameCube? It's already perfect. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, I guess the original Xbox, like, maybe give that, like, a slim that version. That needed a slim model. Because and it never that, got because, one. Because the, there's a reason why it was called Xbox Hugh, uh, to this day. But, yeah, I, I think the original Xbox definitely needed a slim model. Um, but okay. aside from that, there's nothing really else that, like, jumps to mind because like a lot of systems were like oh you know what I thought of a good one the game gear the game gear would have been a good uh, it would have been a good idea to give that a revision make it smaller because it's fucking massive uh make the screen perhaps a little bit bigger um, I don't know. I don't. The biggest issue with the Game Gear is just if we're talking about technology at the time, is making a color screen. True. Like not use six batteries. Yeah. True. Is a bit tough. Um, that's why the Game Boy was black and white for so long. Yeah. Um. Part. I mean, I guess the Game Gear was just ahead of its time in that regard. Yeah. If. If the Game Gear got a revision around the same time the Game Boy Color came out, um, that like fit a, m- a lot of that stuff, then yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think I have a couple different answers. My first one would probably be, and this is kind of an easy answer because I've seen what it's like to have that sort of thing, and that is if the Game Boy Color got a revision that gave it a backlit screen or just a frontlit screen, just something, Because people do a lot of modding of Game Boy Colors where they replace the screen with a backlit screen. I don't know, man. That stuff is so good. Like, it makes me want a modded Game Boy Color that has that. Because, like, the Game Boy Color is pretty comfortable. So you throw in a backlit screen, rechargeable battery. Oh, man, you got uh, you won me over. That is the nostalgia in me. But, um, I have seen a lot of Game Gears with similar, uh, like, improvements. Like, they, they switch out the screen for uh, a backlight. Um, and then also, re- like, some will give it a rechargeable. Or they'll switch out to, like, an uh, OLED screen. Um, so, like, there is some, like, modding you can do. Uh, for Especially, like, the handhelds. Um, but if we're, like, coming at it from, like, what they could have done feasibly... Uh, at the time uh, that the consoles were coming out. I think they probably could have at least done, like, the screen thing. Like, they probably could have given a front light, like they did with the SP. I think that's probably something that they could have done. It probably would have required an extra battery or two, but I think they could have done it. I think the Game Boy Advance should have come out with a... Yeah. There's uh, there's kind of no... front light. Yeah, there's kind of no reason that Game Boy Advance couldn't have. So, like, when we were when you mentioned that part like yeah i would say the game of advance um that's kind of like the major ones like i guess you could revise the sp to have a headphone jack but like that's such a minor thing to be honest like yeah and you know what that's why we're here yeah complain so. about the minor things true yeah what true. else what else would we do with our time uh you know what <laughs> what if they could have just revised the PS1 to have that screen built in. Just make it portable. <laughs> just throw a battery in there and let it go. Fuck it. He's got it. 
He's got it. He's onto something, folks. The 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 PS One P. PS One Portable. There you go. That's my contribution to society. Uh, yeah. What about you, Landon? Would you? What would you revise? Um, I would. But but, change... besi- but besides the Xbox One S to not have shitty ventilation systems. Damn, he got me. That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> um, I guess nothing. I... <laughs> <laughs> I I stole it right from him. Yeah, I would change the Wii U to give it GameCube ports natively. <laughs> I don't know. No, I wouldn't do that. Um, good question. Yeah. I, I I think you guys like pretty much ans- like said most of the stuff that I would have said for like consoles that had revisions. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, make, make the Wii worse by not only removing the GameCube support, but making the tray slide out like the PS3 slipper slip. Oh, oh perfect. no. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> just um, curse. I would just make... Uh, I would revise the 3DS family to where it's region-free instead of region-locked. Done. Okay. Honestly. that That's... Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Wait, no. We- I want to play Dragon Quest Eleven. For the 3DS, we need we need to Mod combine your 3DS. We need to combine all of the worst revision uh, ideas. ideas and put them into one. The Wii Mini with the PS3 Super Slim slider top. Uh, it's battery operated and takes six double A's. Uh, it's Perfect. digital digital games only. <laughs> And Perfect. and the and, Wii Remote is like BlackBerry, and half of it comes out from. The and there's no online, so you can't even download any games. Oh my god, this is literally the worst thing you could. We just Frankenstein's monster, the worst revision of all time. Hell yeah, good but job. It has circle vents. Don't worry. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Don't fucking worry. It has these dumbass circle vents that piss me off. Ah, uh, all right. Well, we've been talking a long time about console revisions, but we do have some catching up to do. It's been a couple weeks. We got some stuff I'm sure we could share with the class. So, Jack, catch us up. Hi. Um, Hi. So, uh, very recently, uh, within the past couple weeks, Bethany, um, my girlfriend, moved in with me uh, as a temporary solution because she's in between places to live right now um and the cat you saw earlier is her cat uh his name is uncle beans uh and he is an absolute menace i had to put him in his cage a while ago because he would not stop trying to fuck with shit while i'm trying to trying to podcast and i just i can't deal with that right now he's great and i love him but also he's a terrorist and he owes me that's me Every week. With cheese With the whiz. fucker that's off screen right over there. So, he's been calm for the most part. I was going to say, on the chair. I'm very surprised. It's been two and a half hours and we haven't heard from him. Yeah. The thing, the thing about him, too, is that, like, this is a new place for him. And so he's, like, yeah. extremely curious about everything. And he's ex- trying to explore, like, every nook and cranny of my house. And it's, it's just... There's some shit that I just don't want him to get into, and it gets annoying when I try to tell him to stop, and he just doesn't listen. He's a cat. He is, He's made not to listen. It's true. Um. Otherwise, uh, hasn't been too too much going on. I. We. What did you guys watch the eclipse the other day? No, I was working. Oh. Oops, that sucks. You asked me this question on stream. I did ask you this question I, on stream. Yes. I don't live anywhere near where it was happening. Yeah. So I guess I'm the only one that experienced that. Uh, the eclipse was cool. I was in the, like, not quite path of totality, but like 99% for the eclipse. Like, I was very much almost completely in the pathway. Uh, and it was great. It looked really cool. I used 
the protective eyewear because I'm not. I would hope so. <laughs> because Don't be I'm, an idiot. Because Don't I'm not stare a, directly into that. I'm not a dumbass. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, about it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. It's only it's only been a couple weeks. I've. I haven't been up to too, too much. I've definitely been, like, kind of weebing out lately. Been watching a lot more anime. Uh, I finished Free Run. Hell yeah. That was, that was, that was really good. Uh, I finished my rewatch of Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, that show is classic. I need to rewatch Yu Yu Hakusho. I think Peak I said that the anime. last time you brought it up. Peak but. anime until, like, the last arc that they rushed out because, unfortunately, Togashi had, like, health complications so he like just finished as fast as he could thankfully the anime adaptation is a is better because they had time to add some extra stuff but it was hard to build off of what limited stuff he had done so like the last arc is in but like the rest of it is like peak anime like i forgot just how much i loved yu yu Hakusho. it's 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 fantastic um finished uh that show, uh, Tis Time for Torture Princess, it was, it was fine, it was cute, it was whatever. Started an anime the other night called New Game, which is about this girl who's fresh out of high school, joins a game development team that worked on the previous games that were like a favorite game of hers. So that's pretty interesting, it's pretty fun so far. Um, and also been rewatch, uh, continuing my rewatch of Dragon Ball Z Kai. I am in the uh, final chapters section, and they're about to do the World Martial Arts Tournament, um, 25th, I think. 20, yeah, 24th, 25th. I don't know, whichever the one that happened in the Boo Saga. Um, that one. The one after the Boo Saga, or the one the one the, start of the, the one at the start of the Boo Saga? that one yeah so about to start that one and i've also gotten back to playing the uh hatsune miku project diva games which is why i'm wearing a hatsune miku shirt um it's fun i'll probably get bored of it or tired of it after a while because those kind of games like rhythm games like i'll like have little like spats where it's like oh i really want to play this a bunch and then I'll play it a bunch and I'll be like, okay, I'm sick of it. And I won't go back to it for like three years. So, I mean, it's fun. Uh, there's apparently a Switch game that has like a hundred plus songs. And I don't have that one, but I have two on PS3. So, I've been playing those ones. I need to get a new PS3 controller. I've been using a, a PS4 controller hooked up by USB, but it keeps disconnecting because micro USB fucking sucks, dude. It does. I'm so gl- I'm so glad we moved away from micro USB because mini USB is fine. USB C is fine. Micro USB, whoever designed that, like it's so they prob- f- micro USB chargers are so fragile. They are. The prongs fucking just stop like they stop connecting properly after like two weeks. Like it's it's so annoying. Like they're so bad. Um, oh yeah, and I've been working on my next video for my solo channel. It's, it's still coming along. It's taking a while because I've been really busy lately, but I should be getting it out soon because I'm actually, I'm in the middle of the editing process. So I just got to put everything together and probably should have that video out kind of soon. Um, oh, I actually have been up to quite a lot. I've been, uh, I mentioned this last time, but I got back into playing Magic the Gathering with my friends, and I've been building a couple new commander decks. We play the commander format. I don't think I mentioned that on a podcast when I said that. I only just said, oh, hey, Magic the Gathering, but no. Uh, I built, like, a new deck, so I've been excited to try that out. By the time this goes out, I'll have already played with my friends again, but I'm not doing that till tomorrow as of the airing, so I don't know how the games are going to go. So, uh, yeah, that's everything. Hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. You were on a, like, vacation of sorts. I was. Um, I think before that, um, I went to the Sonic Symphony. That's right, you did. 
Yeah, I went to the Sonic Symphony before uh, that, but uh, it was like right after we uh, did the last podcast, I went to that. Um, They played all of the metal songs from Sonic Frontiers, and I was like, why? (laughs) That's it? I mean, no, they played a lot more than that. Okay. But like, uh, they played all like all three of them back to back and i was just like that's kind of yeah like that's kind of questionable like i would think that you would want to space that out for the experience i'm gonna see if i can pull up the set list yep here it is there um it's like so the front half of it was only the uh orchestra they they just had the the orchestra and then the second half they bring out the Band. Band. <laughs> um it's you know the the rock the rock cock people come mm-hmm. out um and it's the them rock and cock the orchestra playing um and like the main singer i she's like a metal singer by trade so she you know it's what she's good at so okay it was like well done like everything was well done uh but like that Listen, I just wanted some Sonic R songs. They didn't do any Sonic R songs. Yeah, I'm, I'm wonder, looking at the. I mean, I'm looking at the. Set I mean, list I wonder if they, all those Frontier songs were like close to the end of the set. It looks like. Yeah, it was all pretty much the bat. It was like the end of the set minus the um, the encore songs, and I knew what the encore songs were going to be. Mm-hmm. Do they have like? It was Escape from the City and Live and Learn. Or, yeah. Yeah, of course. Learn. Do they have like some sort of like issues with like working out? I mean, why did they not? I- I'm trying to think what their reasoning is for not playing any Sonic R songs. Like, I would expect like Supersonic Racing at least. That's what I th- was hoping for. I'm kind of confused as to why they don't. I'm wondering if there's like some reason that they can't or something. I I don't see why they couldn't, but like, yeah, I mean they I they used. They even did a remix of Supersonic Racing for Sonic Generations. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, the orchestral stuff was good. I uh, enjoyed it a lot. Um, the the rock cock stuff was fine. They played Fist Bump from Sonic oh, Forces. I, that. <laughs> I forgot like, that game. I, I forgot that song even existed. So like they just started I'm playing, and you were now, like, like, "Oh yeah." This song. Oh yeah, I actually it's fine. I actually like Hoobastank, but I do not like that song. That song is not good. For the most part, I mean, it was fine, but like they played "Night of the Wind," so it was okay. Like, okay, all right. No, yeah. they did not play Seven Rings in Hand," which I would have Boo. taken over. Boo! Either like one of the three like Frontiers, like yeah, they were. Re- they really didn't need to play all three songs from Frontiers. <laughs> yeah. But don't you but, get it, Jack? They got to promote Frontiers because it's I mean, the big game listen, right now. No, I get it. I get it. I mean, I it's the exact same like when a band tours like for a new album and like they are going to play songs from the new album. Did they did it have something from Superstars? Does does the set list said um it had stuff from Mania, but I don't remember Superstars. I don't see anything here. Oh, I also don't know yeah, what I don't... The songs from Superstars are called though, so I don't know. Well no, they did uh they did medleys for like a lot of the oh, okay. like they did like a whole like suite for Sonic One, Sonic Two, yeah. uh I see uh, Mania. I see that they did medleys for one, two and Mania, but for Sonic Three all they gave you is fucking Sky Sanctuary. Yep. Wow Sky, Sky Sanctuary. That's, that's some bullshit. <laughs> They did Tales and Sonic's themes uh, orchestral for um, SA One Sonic Adventure yeah. One. Yeah, those were actually done really well. But it was like it was funny um, that we. But yeah, no. Uh, oh, it was uh, uh, the Aquarium and Planet Wisp from Colors. That was really good. Not bad. Yeah, we. I mean, I can just go on about just and, this thing. And then they did a um, fucking and... Frontiers medley, and then they did all three of the fucking songs from Frontiers. Wait, they did a Frontiers yeah. medley and in then the front the... half. Yeah, yeah. So in the front half with just the or- orchestra, they did that. That's so and much. And then they did 
So yeah, they had a lot of Frontiers representation, but no, like, no superstars, which I, I get. It just came out, and I, they've been doing this tour for a little bit. I, so I think it's funny that there was an encore. Like, I think the prospect of doing an encore with an orchestra is really funny. Did all the did the entire orchestra <laughs> walk off stage? <laughs> No. Okay, I was gonna say, no. then like, why, what why fucking bother what's the doing point? An what's encore? the point of calling it an like, encore? Encores are already yeah. stupid and pointless to begin with, like especially with an orchestra. Yeah, no, it was just just the the cock rocks that that left and came mm -hmm. back, pretty much. Um, but overall, it was really fun. I, I will say that it was a good show. Um, obviously, for most people, it's a little too late to to get a chance to watch it I think at this point because we were pretty pretty far into the the tour the, the tour. tour yeah but uh, if it ever comes around again like I, I'd say it's it's definitely worth worth it uh, to go see uh, it's well done they have like the arrangements are done by uh, like people that actually work with Sega um, what's what's his name that worked on Mania and um, T-Lopes T Lopes. Yeah, T Lopes. Uh, he was like the arranger for some of it. Oh man, oh. I okay. No, you know what? I I looked through. I'm I'm looking on uh, setlist.fm, and I'm was just like looking through all the dates and seeing like what the closest one would have been for to me anyway, which would have been Chicago. And you got kind of screwed actually because they played fucking. They played. They had a Sonic CD medley uh, in between one and two. They played okay. Pumpkin Hill. <laughs> Instead, in they didn't play. I got, I got rooftop run. They also played rooftop run. No, what the no, fuck? No, they like <laughs> Pumpkin Hill was like with the band. What the yeah. fuck? Yo, what the no, fuck? I, I got. Did they play three fucking Frontier songs for for Chicago? They played one of uh two of them. What the fuck? Yeah, they... that that does kind of suck. <laughs> <sighs> Did they anything? I would have stick rather have had Pumpkin Hill. They, they, <sighs> I, I also see oh, wow. on here the Sonic Superstars opening theme. So they had something <laughs> from Superstars. Come on, man! That Chicago show sounds a little bit better. Unfortunately, did that they, was back in October. So did a little too. Did late they for still have? Did where? That's did funny. They, the... they, they, they hold on. So they did a song from Sonic Superstars in October of last year for a previous one and then didn't do Superstars stuff for the more recent show after Sonic Superstars has already been out for a while. Well, this is October 28th, so Superstars was out by this point. Well, that that's what I'm saying. Like they, they it was like right around the release mm -hmm. versus like the game has been out for a while yeah. and they they just No, I I, I agree. I agree. That is fucking stupid. <laughs> Do they still have, like, no. Night of the Wind and stuff on there? Yep. Damn, they chipped you, Landon. <laughs> All right, tell us more. Tell us about the other cool stuff that you did. Okay, I was going to say, now I'm really depressed and I hate that. I, no, I, I don't hate that I went, but that overall it was good. Um, anyway, uh, the big thing that happened was last week, and part of the reason why we sort of, it's a, a little bit of spread out between the parts um, between uh, season one and season two is because I had a week off where uh, it was spring break uh, for Kari so usually my family does a uh, trip to the coast uh, we stayed in Newport um, for a couple days and we went to a bunch of places um, there's a lot of like lighthouses along the coast we went to two of them um, and uh, we went to a lot of state parks and did some hiking and went to two of the wildlife refuges um, on the day we were going back to Portland. And then on that trip back, we also stopped at, um, what was it, who's it? Uh, Tillamook Creamery. And uh, I Your had favorite a shake. place? It's, hey, I, you know, I just have to go, go every once in a while. I actually haven't been to the Creamery since Jack. I uh, was here, so it was nice to, uh, go. to go back on on a like not. It wasn't in the middle of summer, so it wasn't as fucking busy. Mm -hmm. It was still busy because uh, it was a Friday, but uh, it wasn't uh, 
in it was an inside and outside for the ice cream bar open. It was just the inside was open. So, um, yeah, we got some cool stuff. Uh, had a good time. We when we weren't uh, there, uh, we were like baking puzzles with the family or playing card games. Okay. Um, I played. I've been playing a lot of Runner Two. That's like the m majority of what I've been playing. Um, I'm in the Super Nature. I'm almost done with the Super Nature. Um, I did start Princess Peach Showtime. I cleared the first floor, so the first four levels in the the floor boss. Um, the game's all right. Um, I need to give it more time. And I also started Opus Echoes of Star Song, and that's a lot of fun. I like the other two uh, Opus games that I played, so I was excited to get to this one. Um, and then I did my monthly check in with uh, Legend of Heroes Trails. Uh, uh, to Azure today. Monthly uh, right check before in. This. Yeah. It, the last time I played it was March 5th. So literally, it's a monthly check-in. I got about an hour and a half of playtime. And then Cloud posted something. was like, hey, I need to help with testing something. So I was like, well. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, this was <laughs> earlier today? That was literally today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. When you made that post, uh, I, I was like in the middle of a boss fight, and I was like, "Well, as soon as I'm done with this, I'll g jump on the, uh, the Discord call." All um, right. So then. yeah, that was today. Um, so who knows? Maybe I'll get to play it later next week. I don't know. Um, and then I've caught up with. I don't know. I, they might have just uploaded a new episode today. I forget when Sandland like releases the new episodes. I haven't watched any of the new stuff yet. I really do need to. We need to get back to it because like both my girlfriend and I have been what we're what like we really like it. So got, got to yeah. Get I'm back into to the uh, th I think the third episode of the new stuff. Mm. I, I watched that. Um, I really like uh, the female character that gets introduced. She's a great um, character. The uh, the bad guys uh, that uh, were introduced are also a lot of fun, um, and I was very impressed with uh, the fight choreography uh, from the the last episode. Um, General Shiva has like a, a fight with um, with one of the the new antagonists. Okay, and I I thought it was really well done. It really felt like it was Toriyama's style of, like, how his fighting goes. Um, in But just, you know, animated. And so, like, it, it really felt like this is still, like, his product. Um, which I was happy about. Um, it was real cool. Okay. Gotta get back to um, time, yeah. Two last things. Uh, I went and saw the new Godzilla. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Um... It's blockbuster Godzilla, so don't expect, like, as... Like, it didn't have, like, the good story that, like, Minus One had, but it had a fun story um, with King Kong. Um, and then... There's been a lot um, of Godzilla read... recently. What? I said there's oh, been yeah, a lot of two... Godzilla recently. Yeah, the two new, if... two new movies. Um, it's fantastic. I love it. I hope they do a new video game to capitalize on all this not just you know all of these it's in dave the diver and fucking minecraft and all of i'll say bullshit. you know it'd be really cool is if they did like a high budget like polished like war of the monsters style game but with like godzilla like kaiju that'd be cool have you ever played war of the monsters cool. on the ps2 yeah i own a copy actually it'd be so cool yeah. to have like a new godzilla style game like that that'd be awesome um, what was the last thing? Oh, I read through uh, a new manga called not new; it's an older manga. Uh, but I read through one uh, for me, uh, new to me, um, called uh, "We Never Learn," which is just a fucking, it's just a fucking high school etchy like <laughs> possible like uh, harem shit. Just, it doesn't end in a harem. Just something but, like, fun and ridiculous. Yeah. It's just like, just what you expect. Um, 
the the ending is actually like pretty cool. What they did was um, at one point there is a school festival and uh, there's like a rumor whoever is like holding hands or touching uh, when the uh, fireworks happen, then those those two people are their lives are intertwined. Um, and the first time around, it like does a silhouette of per someone like uh, dealing with like the main character. And then it, like, reveals through multiple ending paths. Like, what would have happened if it was, like, this girl or this girl or this girl or this girl. Interesting. Yeah. So, like, so it doesn't... So, so that's how they do, like, the harem but not. Like, it's like... Yeah. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure but just the ending part. Yeah. But, like, the, ho the whole premise is a uh, kid who is from a really poor family is in charge of tutoring... Um, geniuses like uh, people that are like these girls that are like really smart in a certain field but they don't want to like deal with that field they want to go into the complete opposite so like one of them is a super math genius but she cannot like do like literary like like language anything really well but she wants to like like that's what she wants to go into and the other one like wants to do astronomy but she's really good at language arts type stuff. And so, it, like, it's... It'd and then be like the that. other one is, like, uh, she's a professional athlete. She's, like, Olympic-level swimmer. But she has to learn English in order to, like, be able to, like, go to her chosen uh, school uh, because of uh, how much uh, you have to deal with going abroad. And so, like, he has to tutor them in this stuff, uh, and it's just, like, that's where it all fucking okay. harem shit happens. It was good. Uh, I enjoyed it, uh, for what it was. It was, uh, I think a really well done story. All right. So, uh, we've talked a very long time tonight. Uh, good luck, Landon, with editing this audio together. Fuck me. It's gonna be great. Uh, we will see you guys next time. Of course, we have our streams, our regularly scheduled streams on uh, Twitch that these guys will update us on. Um, but we have another episode next time on our top 20 games of all time. It's been 10 years since we did the last one, so look forward to that. Yeah, it's the 2024 edition. Yeah. So thank you all for joining. Roll the outro. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Gaming Stooges Talks podcast. If you enjoyed us, consider subscribing to our podcast RSS feed or follow us on youtube.com slash gaming stooges and twitch.tv slash gaming stooges for more gaming content. If you'd like to chat with us, join our Discord. The link can be found in the episode description. We also want to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Your continued support means a lot to us. Not already one? Please take a look at what we have to offer anyone who becomes a patron at patreon.com slash gaming stooges. See you next time!